Oh, hello. Hello, hello, hello. And welcome to day 10 of the slime experiment thing. Um, crap, I just remembered that I had an idea for a level right when I woke up. One of those like weird wake ups where like you just wake up, but it's like still too early, so you're trying to go back to bed. Because right, it was like two hours before I normally get up, and I was like, I'm just gonna go back to bed. But then I was like thinking about stuff, and I was like, Ooh, I have an idea for a level, and now I'm like, shit. I kind of forgot what it was. I know it involved attack towers. Um, right. So it's yeah, okay. So the premise for uh, this this next level, I think we're gonna do, is since we know that the uh, projectiles can move a movable block. I think it might be useful to have like very high speed <laughs> very fast firing uh, projectiles or attack towers, whatever, that you need to move a block into their path to move a, a block over to like a pressure plate or something that then opens a gate that lets you progress. Right? Something kind of like that. Or then the player has to like wait while the uh, thing is moving, you know? I think that'd be kind of fun. Could prove interesting, right? Um, yeah. Anyway, before I forget about that, let's, let's swap on over to here. Not much else is new that I, I have to uh, address. As before, we are on level number nine. I swore I said that as default pair the last time, but apparently not. Apparently not. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, let's uh, let's get on to it, shall we? Okay. So we have two more levels. After level uh, twenty is finished, we will work on our our next two not here our, our next two items, which is going to be like an ice slick and then a depositor item, and after those. Uh, we'll create the, the green level prefab uh, that we'll be using for levels uh, 30, not 30, uh, 21 through 30. And after we do that, I think what I might do is actually play test up to this point and get screenshots of the levels so that we can uh, upload those here and get those done. I think every 10 levels would be a good thing to kind of play test through, make sure we're not having any issues, that kind of stuff. You know how it goes. All right. So without further ado, let's figure out how the hell we're going to do this. So I think what we should do is let's start out by first clicking on prefab so I can use these items. Let's grab this guy, put it here. And let's grab this guy, put it here. This one is going to attack up. Oops, let's make sure we only do one capital there. This one's going to fire to the right. And we're going to have time to attack the 0 0.5. And the force, let's go with like eight. 
for these. So uh, 0 0.5 and 8. And if we, well, we're not going to hit play because we're going to get killed right away. But uh, I'll move the spawn point over to here. And the end level, I'll move down to here. Uh, well, let's actually just place down the end level area, shall we? Let's make it go right there. Why not? Why not? There we go. Okay. So we have played, we can see how quickly the um, things are moving. It's pretty quick. They do hit each other, which is not ideal. Maybe I should stagger them a little bit. So attack tower one. How about you fire at um, one rate of fire? That way, every 0.5 seconds, one is going to fire, and they should fire together here. One, so we'll kind of do this. This is also a, a good idea. I could use these to, uh, like, make a gap later on. Like, make fast-firing ones, like, in one little area, and then have you be able to move through another area. That could be useful. Then it's, it's, it's getting me thrown off now. Huh. That's interesting. So I guess that would not work uh, unless like it's perfectly timed, which it should be because it's 0 0.5 and 1, so I'm actually guessing well, that's not the case here. But anyway, now that we have that, we need to test our theory that this block and this block will move effectively. We just need to see how fast they move here. So it does move. But it is very slow. The player would be sitting here for like ever. So, what if we like upgrade the force to like 100? Let's just see what happens. I'm not sure force is what's going to like apply how fast it moves. Or maybe it will. Jesus Christ, okay. So maybe let's set the force to 10. And I might just have to make it like shoot even faster. Uh, so that way it like pushes the block quicker. So here we can see it you know, sort of moving the block. Slowly but surely it's moving across. I could also have this be kind of like a timer for a uh, a like pressure plate to where the player has to beat the level in this amount of time like before it hits a pressure plate that resets the level i think for level 10 we will do that where we're gonna have a uh, a reset timer here so they have to beat it in a certain amount of time or else they uh, they reset the level. I think that would be fun. But I mean, it's, it's taking like a minute to get over here, so that's not ideal. So let's let's take this one. What if we just do attack time zero point one? How fast does that quickly move it across the screen? Okay, pretty quickly. You definitely cannot cross that um, thing, then. Look at it go. It's just, it's just zooming. Okay. I think 0 0.5 or 0 0.1 would be good for this. Let's do that. Let's remove this second block. And for this, let's go ahead and add collision into this wall here. So that way we don't have um, it potentially going down and getting misaligned here. Oops, not there. Right here. Okay, so the plan is the player will need to move this block into this area here. Let's move this block back over to here somewhere. 
Now let's go back to our tile palette and we're going to go ahead and add a little bump here, a little bump here, and then we'll just kind of extend it over to here. And then we're going to go up and essentially what we want to do is make it so that the player can go past this point. We want to go like this, I think. Ideal. Oop. Made an extra one there. That's fine, though. Okay. So, let's get that there, that there, that there, that there, and then that. So, basically, the, the thing's going to go in here, go down this way, go up here. Now, we need to add a couple of pressure plates. One for right here, and one for right here. Okay, and what these are going to do is they're going to connect to gates, one of them being here, and one of them being here, right? So before we go any further, let's go ahead and make these gates the correct color so I don't have to do this for every single one later. Okay, and now for the pressure plates. I'm not going to be spawning anything, so that's fine. We want to trigger once. We want to do one object. And then the object to manipulate for this one is going to be this horizontal gate right here. For the other pressure plate, trigger once, one object, and then this vertical gate. And let me just double check on that. Also, let's get some music playing. Let me just double check uh, that the pressure plate is, in fact, able to do one object. If it is a gate, do that. Um, and I don't have do once logic here, unfortunately. Um, so in, okay. So let's do if one object equals true. We want to then check if, oops, if, I don't know how I had nine there, if do, what, wait, what, what did I name that? It was a uh, trigger once equals true. And then we want to search if has triggered equals um, false. And then we want to fall into this area. Um, or else, I want to do this, which we'll just copy all of this down to here. And paste it here. And then we'll paste this here. So basically does the same thing. We're just going to set has triggered to equal true after we go in for the first time. So that way it uh, goes there. Okay, so this should now, once we push this block down through here, so it starts getting pushed across here. The pressure plates should trigger. We're going to set those to active start as false. Right like that. And let's go ahead and hit play. I'm just going to push the block in there. And we're going to make sure that it works as intended. Oh, I hate that. We need to uh, add something in the pressure plate to uh, not have it search for projectiles. Or we can just annoy the player with pressure plates. But while that's doing its thing, oh, if I click off, it's gonna pause it again. I was gonna say, while that's doing its thing, we could uh, actually know the projectiles have already hit it, so. We have to go in here. Um, I guess I can do a if else, or else if, I'm sorry. Else if collision dot game object dot tag equals project tile return. That should just end it right away. Launch react to project tile. There we go. So now if I hit play and 
I'm actually going to line this block up a little bit easier here. Let's actually just put it in here so I don't have to move it and it just starts immediately. So now, as we're firing, it doesn't trigger the pressure plates, which is nice. It is going. And it's going. It should hit the first pressure plate here in a second. Uh-oh. Okay. That's fine because we have a script for that, or we have a, not a script, we have a, a boolean for that, which is move block to this. So that way, if, uh, where's that logic at though? Where do I use that logic at? Right at the top, right? Yeah. If, if move to this is true and the collision equal to move block or inverted block. Okay. Perfect. Now if we test it one more time. Well, let's actually time this too and see how fast it takes. So once the block hits the pressure plate, it should trigger the move block to this uh, trigger, which will Clip it directly centered on the pressure plate, which will then allow it to be sent upwards rather than getting caught. Close the gate so it doesn't move any further. And then it allows it to go upwards. Close that, which closes that off. Now, the one thing here to think about is that that pressure plate uh, doesn't really matter if you have that here because then, I mean, the, the gate is supposed to be what allows the player to cross over through here. However, having it like this means that uh, I'll have to put some extra gates there for that pressure plate to open. So we're going to take this gate. I'm gonna copy it. We're gonna make it actually uh, active at the start this time. And we're gonna copy it again, put it over here, just to kind of balance things out. And so for this pressure plate, we want to untick one object, tick multiple objects, get rid of that, and then we wanna copy over uh, into objects to change all of these gates. So that way, once the pressure plate gets triggered, it'll open these two gates and close off this gate, allowing the player to cross and get through. That's the plan. Yeah, okay. Neat little level thing so far. So now we have to figure out where we want this block to be and what we want the player to do in this area while this is happening. Obviously, we don't want them to sit around for like 30 minutes. <laughs> Not 30 minutes. God, imagine it was 30 minutes. We don't want them to sit around for like 30 seconds and do nothing, right? So I think the obvious play, we just leave this block here. It's 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 gone, it's doing its thing. Um, and then during that time, we need to do something in here. So let's kind of separate the rooms out a little bit by doing this, like that. So the player will spawn up here, they'll push the block down, um, probably into here, as I think about it. Mm. You know what? Let's actually do this. So we don't want to be too obvious with the player, right? We want them to be like, do I push it in through here or do I push it down through here? Um, and obviously they'd be like, why would I push it into an attack tower? Uh, 
That would be just weird, right? Okay. So as they do that, they can come into here, and we will want some stuff in order to get through all this. Now, the easiest way to just kill time would be to have a bunch of pitfalls around here, have a pressure plate that spawns movable blocks, and then uh, just kind of let the player do their thing. So... Hmm. You know what we could do? Yes, okay. Get another attack tower, firing at 0 0.1 rate, firing a force of 10, and firing to the right. So it fires through this gate, essentially. Now, let's add a couple more, or a couple of uh, pressure pitfalls. I don't know why I said pressure plate. Um, I don't know why I'm struggling to read your name. It's, it's B Epsilon or B Epsilon or something like that, right? Anyway, um, to answer your question, no, I have no idea how to decompile a DLL or change a DLL source code. No idea. And DLLs are one of those things that are a mystery even to me. So, oops. So your best bet would be to go on Google and try and figure out what's there. Google has all the answers. Okay. So let's grab a pressure plate, put it here one object, and we will take an object to manipulate, being a movable block, and once we trigger, we want the uh, block to spawn over here. Right. So, with this, what the player will want to do is this. First, I'll push this block down here so it gets going. Come over here, and they will start pushing these up. Then it starts filling in the pitfalls. And I want to seal this one off. Potentially even the next one over as well. Like that. And then, as that happens, you want to come up here, get around behind this block, so you're protected against that, so you can go through here. And then, once that block gets through here, we're going to want to use it for something else. So, we will need to have that happen. Okay. That's the basic plan. It actually worked out pretty well uh, in terms of timing. That was basically opened up right when you finished this little hole puzzle. And uh, I really like that one. Okay. So, I think what we want to do is get a another pressure plate, like over here. Just for now, we'll set it there. Uh, trigger it once. It's going to do one object, and that object is going to be this second gate here. So when we trigger this uh, pressure plate, it's going to seal that gate off, which will allow us to not have those projectiles moving towards us. Which is great. Great, great, great. Because then we can continue to manipulate stuff in this area. The player will just have to be careful not to... Um, mess up, essentially. Okay, so 
what do I do from here? I guess I can have this go like... We'll put it there, screw it. And then just to hopefully help the player realize that they don't need to trigger the pressure plate, we will put this block here so the block that's moving across will definitely end at this location and it won't move from there. Okay, so now that we have the block here, we need to do something with the block and continue it. Now, since we've been using the towers to move the various things around, I'm tempted to continue using them. However, bear in mind that our towers cannot shoot downward or else they'll hit themselves and they'll just not work. So that is one problem to think about. Um, so I can really move left or right or up and whatnot. So that is the question right now. So obviously we can use the block that we spawn to block projectiles, right? And that way we won't have to worry about getting shot by them. Um, so we might do that. If we were to... Hmm. Yes. So if we were to get this guy here, we're going to have it fire at a rate of 0 0.1 as well. Force of 10 is going to go firing up as well. And we're going to grab some of these. And we're going to do this. We're going to leave a gap of two here. We're going to go up to here. And over to here. Hmm. Hmm. So I was thinking we could push the block back over here, but if we do that, then if the block reaches this point, we won't be able to push it away again. Also, we're doing that. I should do this. There we go. Okay. And so we also want to get a vertical gate. We're just going to move this over here. It's going to actually be active, though. We're going to move it down one. Set it to active, active on start. We're going to add another pressure plate right here. This pressure plate is also going to trigger once. And it is going to link up to the new gate we just added. So once you trigger this pressure plate, that gate's going to open and it'll start sending stuff up that way. So the trick to this is you want to get that block that you're moving over to here, push it down to trigger the pressure plate and open the gate. You're going to push it down using the block to block the projectiles and you can lead into this area. Uh, neat. Okay. So we just need to figure out what we're doing up in here. Hmm. I suppose what I could do. Let's remove this immovable block. And let's have this pressure plate. We'll move the block to it. So when it touches the pressure plate, it'll snap to the uh, center of the pressure plate and close off the gate. But the player kind of hide around it. I mean, this might be a little bit of trial and error for the player, figuring out what pressure plate does what and goes where. Um, but I think it's if they if they kind of like pay attention to what these are doing, where they're opening and closing gates and they see more pressure plates in here, I'm sure they won't be tempted to step on this one, seeing that this one's firing upwards, right? So they'll at least put the block here. 
or they'll step on this one to seal that gate off. Who knows what the, the player will think they're doing anyway. Um, so we're going to have that happen there. And then... After that... I was thinking it would be neat if we were to have the player um, come through here and then because they've left this block, it gets pushed back up to a pressure plate that's over here that opens like a gate somewhere in this section. Um, it's just this would have to trigger multiple times if that's the case. And the player would have to be careful about what they want to have happen here. So... Let's set this... Let's just set the pressure plate here for now, and then we'll figure out where we want to put it and assign it to next. Um, we don't want to trigger once, so we want we want we want the player to be able to like walk over it to trigger it, see what it does, and be like, should I keep that open or closed right now? I mean, obviously, if they like leave here, they'll see the blocks starting to move up, and they'll be like. Oh, or they'll just completely mess up and be like, why is that block closed? Or why is the door closed now, even though I opened it before? Then they'll see that this pressure plate got triggered again because the block hit it. And then they'll uh, be like, dang. I need to uh, not trigger that block when the person's up down. So it might be having to do like a little bit of a tricky thing here, considering they have to push a block here Step on this pressure plate, push it down. So they'll have to get like the block here or something, go back up, touch it to untrigger the pressure plate that they touched, and then go back down. It's kind of like a little bit of a, a back and forth kind of thing there. So next up, next up, why don't we force the player into going upwards and force of three time, let's go with like six, so it's not very fast. Let's, let's see how that looks. There's going to be a lot of projectiles on this map. Players here and they will come out, go up, and over. Six seems a little bit too slow. What about four? Even that seems slow. Back to two seconds then. Yeah, because if we're moving up anyway, we're traveling with it. It's basically just there to prevent the player from going back, essentially, which they wouldn't be able to because of this tower anyway. So yeah, I think I think if we leave it at two, that's fine. It's essentially there to scare the player away um, going back this way. All right, um, and then we can go ahead and do this. Kind of make the player go up there into a tunnel. And from there, what do we want to do? Hmm. So the, the end goal to get down to here. I could make like a series of like tunnels that the player has to go like down here, up through. Well, that wouldn't work. They'd have to go like up here and down through here. That's a little meh. Let's see. I do have the destroyer blocks. The destroyer blocks will get destroyed by the projectiles, so they can't block anything. The Block voids wouldn't be helpful here. The player needs to at least wait here for that pressure plate to trigger to open something else up. Hmm. We do need one more gate somewhere. And that is the problem.
One second. Did I... Okay. I wasn't sure if I made these unscaled in time or not. So, now that I was thinking about it, I want them to keep animating. Okay. Um... Hmm, this is a real head scratcher. So, the player gets to here. We need to do something to have them go the rest of the way. If I place an attack tower, it can attack up this way, up this way, up this way, up this way, or back and forth this way. Can I do something? with movable blocks. If I had one more space to work with, what I could do is place an attack tower, conveyor belts, and then an attack tower here, attack towers align here, and then we could have the player like hit a pressure plate that would spawn removable blocks that would move down the conveyor belts that the player would have to like kind of keep pace with to avoid getting shot. Could I? Could I still do that? If I make like a half like that. Let's first of all place a Pressure plate here. This one we're going to tie to a block spawner. Uh, it's going to do one object. And then we will place it on a conveyor belt that is going to be going down. We need to go, I think it's negative 90? Yes, got it right this time. In the direction. And then we want to go. One, two, and then three, four, five. No, not five. We're gonna go over here with that one. Or do we swap it so that it is we're here, and then these two are over here. And we have an attack tower here, going to the left, and we have an attack tower, crap, and we have an attack tower just right above it as well. Let's move these down by one. Go. Um, time to attack, 0 0.1, force. Go with 10. These are both going to be fine to the left across here. And then the block is going to kind of move. We're going to want to grab another conveyor belt. And it's going to be at a 180 rotation. Going to the left. Now the question is going to be whether or not the block is going to get knocked off here, but the player should be following across here to prevent it from moving too far off the conveyor belt. Um, at least that's the plan. So after we do that, we have one, grab two, or not. Yeah, I'll do that anyway, and then we want to go to the right. So, we're just gonna remove rotation, go right, and copy this one over to here, where the block will end up in a block void. So, if this works correctly, let me just double check on all of these. It's right, right, right. 
down, left, left, down, 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 down. Perfect. Okay. So now if I I still need to use this pressure plate to open a gate somewhere. And I think I want to put it like here or something. Let's add a little thing in the wall out to here. Honestly, I could just remove the uh, conveyor belt at this point and just put a uh, void block here. Let's do that. Less things we have in the map means it's gonna be smoother for the player. Especially when we're having so many projectiles already. It uh definitely don't want to affect performance negatively here. We can do that. Then we can grab ourselves this little guy, put it there. We can grab ourselves a vertical gate, put it down here. And then we can link the last pressure plate that we put down, this one. This and that should, in theory, be all we have to do for this level. All right, let's play test it. Let's make sure everything works as intended for us here, shall we? Okay. So, we're gonna push this block down. It's gonna get sent over. We're gonna start the process of getting these blocks sent over. Luckily, it can uh, move multiple at a time, so that's great. I don't know if we need to do all of these, but it is good to have a little extra space to work with here. Let's just push this up, and we can get right behind it. That one's open there. We're going to get in position behind this. We don't necessarily need to wait for that block to come all the way and hit this pressure plate. We can just uh, wait for it to get into position right there. When we hit that, which does that. Okay. We're going to push this down so we can get out of here. We can go back up through here. Now the key for this is we can just... Uh oh, I forgot to move the uh, pressure plates spawn thing over there. That's fine, we can just do that real quick. Um, put a scene to this pressure plate. Yep, that one. We'll just move that onto the conveyor belt now. Just move that out of the way. We can just kind of follow behind it and realize that that wall doesn't exist. Great. Um, why did this wall not disappear this time? Well, first of all, let's get in here and make this correct. Tile map, please. Thank you. Okay, so the walls are in there now. Um, let's just double check. Everything looks filled in. Yep, okay. So, we get the pressure plate code. Okay, if is one object is true, and trigger once is false, we're going to go into here, and it is a movable, well, it's not a movable block, it's a gate. Which means it's going to check to see if it's true, and if it is, it's going to set it to false. So, I don't think it moved off the panel after that. Hmm. Okay. Let's just hit play, and we're just going to skip ahead 
I'm going to uh, pick our player, and we're going to move him around here. I'm going to take our lovely little uh, movable block. We're just going to move this one over to here. Okay. Back to the game. We're going to trigger this. Well, I guess we don't need to trigger that. Whatever. So the pressure plate, for whatever reason, is not triggering when I get on it. When I leave it. Why? So in the pressure plate, we check if one object equals true. We then launch to go into here, where we get the object to manipulate's tag, which it is a gate that we want to check if active is true, we then turn it off. This is enter 2D, right? Yeah, okay. Debug.mog. Turning off. Okay, let's check this out. Go to our console. It is not triggering at all. Okay. Let's double check this pressure plate then. Oh, I forgot to even select one object. So that would uh, that would do it. Yep. If it doesn't have one object or multi-object selected, the leave entry is gonna be the only thing that triggers, so. Let's try this one more time, now that we've actually done this properly. Oops, a little more shot, there we go. All right, let's get this party started. It's almost spooky when we're moving these along. I feel like sometimes I'm gonna like be shot by one of the uh, arrow things here. Okay, so it's moving upwards. Let's get that blocking. Make sure we get in here before it hits that. It does that. We're gonna get into position. In position, we're going to trigger this, trigger that, walk off of it. We're going to leave, wait for that to go, go up here, then we're going to have to wait until that one crosses back across and triggers the pressure plate. spawn our block and we can just go oh fuck yeah that's unfortunate we better just slow the conveyor belts down a bit that might be a good idea yeah let's uh let's slow the conveyor belts down So that should be all the conveyor belts. We're going to move them at a force of one. Now, if we hit play, they should be a little slower now. And I'm just going to take my guy. We're going to skip around all this. We're just going to test this little piece out. But I think the, uh, the best bet is to spawn multiple blocks, so like that, like that, and then we just kind of get behind them. And then the gate should be open for us to like, leave out of. But if not... 
Another possible thing you could do, I guess, is... Like, move down the blocks. Until you get uh, them built up. Oops, that's not what I meant to do at all. Well, I just got fucked. Okay. But yeah, it's possible to get through here without uh, having any issues. So we, we did it once before. It's just we got a great kind of a pile up. I might even create or make those conveyor belt go slower. Or drug all again. I think if we can go like 0 0.25, we can slow it to like a crawl. Which then if we grab the player over here. They really barely move. And we can make a nice firm wall for us to like go past. We just gotta we just gotta protect ourselves with the block. Then we can easily get through and leave. And actually even better you know what, we don't need these last two conveyor belts here. We can just grab the block void. We can just slide it over to here. That way the player's not gonna get uh, harassed by the, the blocks. Nice. Oh. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Okay. So I think that's the plan. Um, it does seem a little slow. Let's just go 0 0.5 for the speed. All that good. So yeah, that'll be the level. And... Sweet, okay. So we just need to make sure our stuff is assigned. So we want to do a lock here. We'll grab all of our pitfalls first, since we have so many of them. We then want to do pressure plates. And then gate. Oops. There we go. Gates go in there. Um, I don't think we need to assign the attack towers because they can't be destroyed, and the only thing that that does is fix them if they're destroyed. That's fine. Um, we then have movable blocks we need to assign using the prefab or else they won't work properly when we want to play. Game. Okay. We have our... Oh, there we need to make a block spawn. Cube here. Throw it over to here. And then add a spawn point to this guy. Okay. So that's everything assigned. Also, I just realized something. The player, when they see this block, they might be like, hmm, what should I do with that? I guess I'll just move it over here to, for safekeeping. Put it right here to kind of see what the pressure plate does before they commit to anything. Um, then they're gonna hit the pressure plate and it's not gonna do anything because the block is interrupting them. <laughs> well, they'll figure it out, I'm sure. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and we will create a prefab of this level. There it is. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. We'll go ahead and open up this boy. Set the items to default. And we need to go to level 28, the end level script, and add in our game object of 29. Save. Excellent. And then in 29, we need to look at our talking. So in 2.8, we had talked about the uh, projectiles and needing to block them and whatnot. So in 2.9, the thing that we can talk about is I don't know. What do we have the, the character, the, the scientist guy talk about? I don't think we need three to convey it. So, 
Let's see. In this test, we will be testing your patience as well as your ability to think ahead and plan things out. Sometimes you just need to try something to see what happens, regardless of the outcome. I think we can say that. So that kind of gives them a hint. You know, it says something about patience. So I mean, the patience is the uh, the, the movement of the the blocks with the attacks. And then when I say sometimes you just need to try something to see what happens regardless of the outcome, that means hitting the pressure place to see what they do and going from there. And then the thinking ahead part is what happens with this pressure plate in that gate. Yeah. Okay. That one is a calm plate head. Mm. All right. Next up. Hmm. What? What? What to do? So, we kind of set a trend after level uh, six with seven, eight, and now nine, all using attack towers for one thing or the other. This one was just um, you trying to avoid the attack towers. This one was you. Uh, needing to use blocks to block the attack tower from hitting you. And then nine was you're using the attack towers to your advantage in order to get stuff out of your way and then move stuff in. So, what should I do next? <sighs> hmm... Let's see. I feel like we could use some more tower stuff. Um, how about this? I need to use the restroom. So let's take a moment, step back, stretch, think about it come back with a fresh mind on how we're going to create the uh, next level. Be right back.
Right. I did remember just now that uh, I had said something about wanting to make like a timer using a attack tower and a block. And I think we should do that. Yes, 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 yes. So that'll be what we do for this one. Now. Now. Let me hit play real quick. What if I just hollow out this little area here? Like that. And inside it, we put an attack tower here. A pressure plate <coughs> here. And we're going to have to create something um, here, basically. Uh, so let's add a new Boolean thing here. Okay. We want to do a serialized field called reset level. Okay. So we want to check for the very first thing. Um, um, else if. No, we don't want to do that. We just want to check here. Um, we'll do if reset level equals true. We want to do um, <coughs> game object dot find game object with tag gm dot. Uh, get component level reset dot reset level. We don't want to reset the timer for this one. We just want to reset the level. So if reset level is true, it's basically going to do this and then it's not going to care about anything else. Uh, we're just going to go return at the end, just, just in case it tries to run something else down through here. Um, I'm also going to do up here where it says if um, reset level equals true, we're just going to do return here. So basically what this will do is it, it'll make it so if something exits the pressure plate, when the reset level is triggered, it will not do anything, right? So we'll do that. On this pressure plate, we're going to click reset level, the only thing that matters here. We are then going to get our block. And actually, I guess we can leave some of the uh, level here intact. Excellent. And then this one here is going to go across to here. To here. There we go. So we then want to grab the attack tower and change its components. We want to make sure it goes to the right. We want to set time to attack to be. Well, let's just set it to two and leave force three. Let's see what a default attack tower, how long it takes in order to move a block. So first of all, we're not going to know what's happening. We're just going to see the uh, text box come up and say some stuff. And once it decides to go away, we'll see that the cube is moving across the screen. There. 
Okay, so it is taking quite a bit of time here. I don't think any of our levels have taken over like three minutes to complete, so... What can I do with this? Okay, so it's been a minute and we've made it less than a fifth of the way. So why don't we increase the Time to attack to 0 0.5 and see how steadily it starts moving. So at 1.30, we were right about here. Let's see how this goes. Blocks width with a time like that. Does increasing the force do anything for us? So if we had like 10 force, it sort of looks like it does. Sometimes. I like how I made like a timer that's not a timer but is instead just like a, uh, an in-game component element, right? Like, some people would just put like a countdown timer in the upper right or something. I just do this. God, that's funny. I just want to see what happens when it hits, too. I got a null reference. Okay. Hold on. Ah. The level reset script is in the uh, level. So instead of just searching for GM, we want to search for the level here. There we go. Right. That's, I don't know why I was thinking the other way around, or whatever. Okay. We want to increase the attack. Uh, let's increase the force by six. Time to attack to 0 0.5. Just see how they, uh, how they go. Okay. Excellent. So, what we will do is... I have no fucking clue at this point. That was the only idea that I had right now. But we need to do something that's going to take the player a long time. No idea what I'm doing. Um, in case that wasn't obvious already. So we have to do something that is going to cause the 
player some problems, right? They're gonna have to do something. But what? So what we could do is to kind of distract the player from this thing down here. We could have a, another thing, um, which could be time to attack 0 0.1, force of 10. We could add a block here, you know, and then let's add a add some stuff to our tile palette here. Yeah. Not sure where I want to go with it exactly, but we'll just kind of go there for right now. Uh, and then I want to take this for right now. Figure out what to do with it later. I don't know if I want to wrap around or whatnot. So we're going to do that, and then we are going to take this over through here. I believe. Then we can go here, here, and here. Maybe we can go ahead and just take this over to here and replace that block with that block, right? Okay. So at the end, we'll place a place a we'll place a pressure plate. Well, right here, and we're going to have this trigger a gate here which is going to open up to let you out of the level essentially um, first and foremost let's go to here and actually before we go there uh, let's add this gate here as well just for now then we can go over here and just assign the different textures there we go okay now, with that done, go to the pressure plate, it's going to do multiple objects, it's going to trigger once, and the objects to change is going to be this one, and this one, right? Yes, okay. Nice, so, the idea is the player is going to do stuff that's going to move this uh, thing all the way over to here. I'm just going to trigger this pressure plate, fling this open, and allow them to get out of the level. So, how do I want to do the rest of this? Well, I believe the plan is going to be every few blocks here, I'm going to have a gate. That is going to stop the block from moving through. And the player is going to have to do something up here that will trigger those gates from happening. Or from, from, from they got to open the gates, essentially. Um, what can I do to make the player waste time to risk losing the level from this? Now, incidentally, I realized I can grab this, put that here, right that. Um, and should I do anything down here is another question. Or should I just kind of fill that in and have the exit be down here? I guess where's the fun if I have them just get like here and then that's the that's the end for them, right? So let's put a, put a down place there since that looks the easiest to maneuver. We'll put the end level thing down through here. Spawn point, we're going to go once again up in the upper left. And down here, I think what we'll do is maybe add some pitfalls and stuff. A pitfall, the level spawn right there. This level is going to be all about wasting the player's time. Hmm. 
Okay. And then let's get a, another pressure plate here. And what this one will do is spawn. Hmm. Question, do I have a way to spawn multiple things at the same time? If I say it is one object, multiple objects, I do not. Okay. Well, that's fine. What I'll do instead is spawn the block right in the middle, I think. So we're going to go object to manipulate is that one. going to be one object. And we're going to take this little pressure plate spawn thing, and we're going to put it right in the middle there. When you hit the pressure plate, it spawns in the middle, and you're going to have to basically go back and forth, hitting the pressure plate and moving this a bunch of times in order to uh, do anything, right? So essentially, what's going to happen, let's just hit play. Grab our player, drag him down to here. They're going to trigger this, push it in, trigger this, push it in, trigger this, push it in. So I'm getting an, uh, an index out of range error there, but we'll see what that is in a moment. Do that and they're out. And just doing that in these 30 seconds, I want to see how fast the timer thing moved. Okay, it did move quite fast there. Okay. So what error did I get here? What was out of range? What is this? It was in... Fuck. What? It's not even telling me where, like, it is at. An element? UI? Huh? It opened this up, which... What is, what, what's it selecting? I don't... Scene hierarchy window. Aims. What? Um... Hey, Google. Uh... Unity out of range error on dock area? There is nothing about this in Google. <laughs> Plenty of stuff about uh, other errors. I mean, there's this thing that says an on GUI error. But it's like a Unity Editor dot doc area colon on GUI error, which is not what I'm getting here. No issues in my code, because I didn't change anything when that error came up. Let's just clear that out and hit play again. Maybe it's because of how I dragged my character or something? I didn't really see when it came up. When did I get that error? Huh. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect us. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, click that there. All right. So. So.
Huh. Okay, well, we got that. We usually have to spawn the block, push it across. Just adds more time that it's going to take. Um, so up here, in the rest of the area, what do we want to do? Let's make sure everything goes in the uh, correct area. So, I could obviously have the player toil around with more um, attack towers, pushing stuff and waiting for it to get places. But that just seems not as intuitive. No. Hmm. Well, 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 we haven't used lovers much. I mean, we do need to do something with lovers in order to, like, open up these gates, I think. So, how many gates do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's just make seven lovers real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, let's get the stuff that we need out of the way, and then when we uh, figure it out, we can move stuff around. So, we just need to set up all of these. So I think these are all the horizontal gates. Yep, okay. So, lever one, you get this horizontal gate. Lever two, you get this horizontal gate. Lever three, you get this horizontal gate. Lever four, you get this horizontal gate. Five, you get this one. Lever six, you get this one. And level eight, lever eight? No, lever seven, you get this one flat. Okay. <laughs> It is time to randomly place these levers. One goes there. Um, you can go here. You can go here. You can go over here. You... Which one have I not moved? This one. You can go here. You can go... I guess here. Okay. So now the question is, how do I make this hard to navigate. Okay. So since the player's gonna start on the upper left, let's go ahead and place a pitfall here just to prevent them from uh, just going immediately to the right, hitting that lever, and being done. I mean, I guess I could make this a maze of pitfalls where you have to just kind of go through, hit all of the levers, and then uh, do it like that. But is that fun? No. No, it's not. I need to do something that will make it a little more fun. Okay, let's take, oops, grab this lever. No, let's just keep the levers against the wall. Nothing in the middle. Okay. Okay. Let's grab a tower. We'll place it here. This one's going to attack to the left. And time to attack. Let's see how one is. So it's gonna fire, fire, 
fire. So you might have time to uh, go between this and the map. You be very careful about it, but you can. Okay. So with that firing across, the uh, player will need to navigate back and forth across to hit the levers. We just need to sort of divide it up, I guess. that so the player can't just walk by everything, I guess. There we go. Okay. Right, you know what? Let me move this one up to there. Gotta do that. I don't want to just make it a maze to get the levers. I want to also do something else as well. So. If it's just levers and stuff, then it's not necessarily, you know, fun. We can do that, kind of separate those out. We can put one here, make the player have to move a little bit more. Levers here, so the player can't just get or no, pitfalls there, so they can't just get behind. Um, I can put one here. Do that. Okay. One there. Why not? All right. So, how do I improve this and make it so that the player has to do something else in addition? To flipping the levers. Maybe certain levers will give a block somewhere as well. Let me look at the lever script. I don't know they can do multiple objects, right? Um, lever script, that's level script. I don't think I have it open. So, with these, I take that, um, multiple objects. Well, I could add a tag to add it spawning blocks. So if I do, like, if g.tag equals, equals movable block, else, do that, we want to do, uh, Instantiate G. Um, comma. Spawn point. And then we'll create a list of objects to call objects spawn point. Go down here, we'll do uh first of all let's make a counter. In counter equals zero. We wanna do um jix spawn point counter. Dot transform dot position uh pressure plate how are you instantiating stuff am i am i just losing my mind oh it's just a transform okay Okay, 
If we can do that, then we can just make the block its own little thing. We'll basically be spawning a new block. That way we don't have to worry about like resetting stuff or anything like that. And the only time we really care about adding a, a counter, I guess because it's not always going to be a thing there is. We can just go counter plus plus. There we go. Okay. Excellent. Okay. And then when we reset, basically take all objects in objects to change. Gee, we just want to do the same thing here. And we want to do if g dot tag equals uh, movable block. We want to do nothing. Otherwise, we will do this. Because it's not going to exist in the world before the lever is flipped. So we're going to do that. Um, I'm going to say do nothing. And honestly, I could say if it does not equal movable block, um, do this and then just save myself having this empty space here. But I think it's a little more explanatory if I do have it like this. And so that's why I'm doing it that way. Okay, so now if we move this over here, turn this up, and we have our lovers with multiple objects. We now have a spawn point thing as well. So if I wanted to, I could have certain levers um, make it so you flip them on and off and stuff like that, right? So what we will want to do, I think, is to uh, create some spawn points for the levers and have the blocks spawn on them. So essentially, we want to seal off some of these earlier rooms. If we grab a, a pitfall here and put it like here and here, we can have a block spawn here and we can push it down. I just want to try something here quick. I just want to see if I can, can I get the level from here? If you're very sneaky with it, you can. But I feel like most players won't be like, yeah, I'm just gonna go in there and risk that. I'll let the players cheat like that if they want to. That's fine. Good enough. Um, the player goes up through here, down through here. I can have this area here sealed off like that. For some reason, I moved that first pitfall. Weird. Okay. And then that's going to be, I'll spawn one here, and I'll spawn one here. But we can't spawn anything in this row, or else the projectiles are going to start moving it over to the left. So it comes up through here, up through here, down through here. We can mess around up here a little. Let's add one here, here, and here. I wonder if that's enough time for them to go around like that. So we'll have like this lever will spawn a block here for the player. And then this lever will spawn a block like here for the player. And then this lever will spawn a block here. Like push that down there. And then this lever will spawn two blocks here. No, that, that wouldn't work, would it? I might have to get rid of this block here. 
Get rid of that one. Okay. And let's instead move that lever away from that wall so they can't just get in kitty cornered. There we go. Okay. All right. So, this lever, I want to. Little objects, a starting state. It's gonna be true and then false. So let's grab the horizontal gate six, put it into object to change. I can remove that. Okay. And now I can add this to object to change. And we need to add a spawn point for it. So we're going to use three blocks, I think. So add empty block spawn three. Okay. And then number six, we will spawn this one. If we add this to here. Need to check the code. Um, so if object is movable. Okay. So we do not want to increase counter um, every time, regardless of if it's a movable block or not. We just want to do it in here. We don't want to add a bunch of extra spawn points we're not going to use. Okay. So. This block, we want it to spawn right here. The so lever. I'm going to actually grab these levers. I'm going to move them down the hierarchy, closer to these blocks and stuff. Now, same with these six gates here. We're going to move them down. There we go. Just so they're easier to like manage on to keep scrolling up and down in this hierarchy just here. Um, perfect. Okay. So this one has the gate that it's going to configure, and it also has a block that it's going to deal with. When you flip the lever, it is going to spawn block number one right here. So that way you can push that one down and hit that lever next. All right. Lever number five, you can't do anything with. It's just kind of there. Um, so that one, it can stay as having only one thing. Lever four, this one, which is open, we're going to make you, which is gate four, have multiple objects to change. You're going to be using spawn point number two, starting state, uh, true, and then false. And then um, multiple objects to be checked. And then we need to move this uh, spawn point thing. So I think we'll move this one to up here. No. No. Where would I be able to put this? I think, no, I, I, can't, I can put it here. I just need to move this lever over one. So we'll spawn the block here. You can go down over, push it down. Then you can get into this area to get to that lever there. Okay. And then the last one that we need, it will spawn here. And this one should be triggered by, it's not gonna be triggered by this lever. Lever one is going to configure this horizontal gate and configure a movable block. I'm going to have two spawn states, one on, one off. I'm going to have this last spawn block here and multiple here. All right, and then the last spawn block is there, there, and there. So let's test out the level. Let's see how just cursed I made this. Okay. You flip that, one gate opens. Flip this, two gates open. 
Oh, I think we're firing too fast. I can't get uh, get past now. We'll just get wrecked. Yep. Okay. Where's that tower at? We need to make it fire slower, a lot slower. Now let's make it three and travel at a force of two. Let's see how that looks. Fire will start running through here. Oh. Just barely get around there. Let's go ahead and flip this lever. Okay, a block spawned back there. Good to know. I'm just gonna run around this area here. Wait for another one to pass. And we can go through here. Flip that lever. Another block has appeared. We can go back through here now. And address this. So we can go ahead and push this one down to unlock this lever. And then. Over here, push that one down to unlock that lever. Go through here. Go through here. We can push this one down. Flip that lever, which unlocks all the gates. And then... Oh man, that's cruel. I didn't even realize that uh, the gates are out of order for this. And then it's going to drive that one all the way over to this pressure plate. Which will then hit this block. Do that. Do that. Do that. Do that. And... Whoop. <laughs> almost, almost out of time. And beat it in a minute 45, roughly. If you didn't know exactly what you were doing, it might take a little longer, which is fine. But once this pressure plate triggers, the level would reset. Oh. And send me back. Of course, it's not going to actually reset all the uh, pitfalls and stuff, because I haven't set it up to do that yet. But that's fine. That works, okay. All right, I was considering that uh, maybe I could make the levers do the, like, differently. Um, but I think I like it how it is now. Yeah, I like the timer too. That's one thing I wanted to do with the, uh, the towers after learning that they can push blocks was kind of like make a, a timer with it. So like you have to, Beat the level before this block reaches there, and if you don't, you're, you're screwed, right? So, let's add in all of the various items that we have here that need to be reset if the game ever resets. Here's all the pitfalls. Um, we have all these pressure plates to go with. Of course, we have the levers. We then have... Pack towers don't matter, gates matter. All the gates will start. Okay, we don't have any movable blocks. We do have movable blocks, however, two of them, in fact, that we're going to have to add. Uh, Z block spawn. I'm going to copy that twice. Add in spawn points. Add that guy there, that guy there, and then just add two movable blocks into these slots here. All righty. So that is what's going down. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay, perfect. So, let's see. Welcome to the next level. You will want to use what you previously learned in the other levels. 
if you are not sure exactly what to do, just doing what you can may yield results. I wanted to like talk longer than usual to hide the uh, the timer that's down there um, and going on. So, yeah, fun. Okay. Um, hold on a second. Is the lever, I think the lever sprite is cut off by the wall. <laughs> that's funny shit. Okay, anyway. Um, by the way, by the way, you may want to do this level quickly. Okay. So, I, I was really hoping that I could, like, drag the level out longer than, like, a minute or two. But, seriously, each freaking level is a goddamn minute. It's, it's so annoying. I think the longest level I've made is three minutes long, is what it took me to finish it. So, yeah. Not the greatest, but okay. So, what we will want to do. Uh, let's see, if you're not sure exactly what to do, just doing what you can, maybe your results. Um, any progression is good. Progression, after all. Okay, we'll say that. And then we can save this into our world of prefabs. And level 20 is done! So we can go to level 9 here. Go to the end level. Copy in level and just like that, hit save. And we can go to our game world manager. You just add in level nine and level 10, just like that. Hit save once again, and we can unload a little more time. Perfect. So, first 20 levels are done. We're a little less than halfway through making all the levels. All right, now. Let's go ahead and we're going to add this prefab up here. And we're going to, first of all, before I do that, let me just double check. Is this set up? Yep, it is. Okay. We're going to unpack this prefab and we're going to name this prefab as level three dash. And then I'm, I'm, just, I'm not going to put an X because if I put an X, I'm going to have to backspace every time I want to um, rename it. So we're going to do that. Level name is going to be two, or sorry, three dash. Level number is going to be, well, two. We're gonna start with, okay. And then for messages, let's just add two down here for now. Um, current level, we're going to copy over there. We're gonna do that. And I think I think that's all that we want to do here right now. But we are going to go ahead and create a new tile palette called the Green Room. That in uh, Assets, Tile Maps, select folder. Then we will go ahead and minimize that. And we're going to drag over our green tile map. We're in the tile map folder, so we're not getting spammed with all that nonsense. Okay, now we have our green blocks to work with. So let's waste no time and go ahead and create our default border. I think we were here for the... Uh, Other stuff here. So, boop, 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 boop. Up to here, over to here, down to here, and then we just fill this little area in here. And then the level default is, is done. Excellent. Yes. Now let's just hit play and see what it looks like on the eyes. Not bad. I didn't make it bright green because I didn't want to, uh... The rebel level script has not been assigned. Oh. Music. Right. 
music hasn't been assigned. That's fine. Um, so let's mute and let's play our music and decide which one we're going to use for this world. Um, so sounds, music. All right, so that's the main menu music. I'm going to rename this to be Z main menu with at the end. And it's not in the way. Um, so how's this one? Okay. What about this? Okay. This one? I think we'll use uh, the, the Spider Village uh, song for this one. So World 3, I'm going to be that one. Okay. This one will drag in our audio clip right there. And then I think that's everything that's assigned a default value. So we'll go down to our prefab, world-specific prefab. We're going to drag World 3 down to here. And we are done with that. That's been prefabbed. It is ready to go. Uh, we can then uh, unpack this prefab and I'm gonna minimize this real quick. So copy. Boom, 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 boom. So that way we have all these levels ready to go. I'm just going to rename all of these real quick. That way we have that done for next time. Also, I don't know why I put the two there, since I happen to like go two, four anyway. And with this, I'll have all these ready for the 20s. So, yay. Six, dash six, twenty six. Okay, three dash eight, twenty eight, here, three nine, three dash nine, and yes, I'm face palming nine. I hit an unlock, my bad. Level 30 and then 3 10 right there. Okay. Now, open up all of these. We have the end level to deal with right here. So that'd be 21, 22, 3, 4. Five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, and thirty. And the next levels we can't really do anything with until we uh, arrive at them. So we're just going to minimize all of these real quick. Okay, and we'll select the uh, 2 through 10, and we're going to go ahead and uncheck them so they're not acting in the scene, so they're not interfering with our current level. And we're going to select the level 3-1 items and make it the default so we can do that, and we're going to stop face palming my model. All right, 
Let's go back to our music here. Okay. First of all, now that we've finished those 10 levels, let's go ahead and add our new um, abilities here. So we want to implement our ice and implement our depositor items uh, here. So first of all, let's go ahead and throw these out into the world. Go. Okay. We have ice and depositor. So simply, we want to make this a above background. Actually, this one we want to go. Look at that character level. Character's not going to be able to go over it anymore. Um, actually, mm, above background. We'll go above background for all of these. So uh, this one will be above background. Excellent. So we're going to add some new scripts. So let's go to our scripts, object scripts, create ice script. And we're going to create script depositor. Okay, so we'll select these and we'll drag the thing onto them. Okay. Not like that. Uh, I script. Am I blind? I just named it here. What the hell? I script and then depositor script goes here. Cool. So let's open these up in our uh, code here. All right. And I think I also want to open up the conveyor belt script, at least for the ice one to compare them with, right? Okay. So. Oh, that's excellent. Let's set that aside for right now, because we have to add something else to the um, depositor script. We're going to add a canvas, and we're going to add a text mesh pro here called um wait can i do this hold on delete that ui text yeah, i do have to add a whole canvas to the thing god damn um Not what I want to do then. I want to add a 2G object, right? Physics, tile map. How? Let me go to one of my previous Unity games. Um, slime, ex not slime experience, I'm just a slime. Assets, scripts. I wanna look for my damage number script. Um, is it attack related? No. Was it managers? Or was it? Fuck, it might be. I might have to open up the freaking battle manager. Okay. So here's my uh, my battle manager script for the uh, I'm just a slime turn-based game. This is crazy. Um, because you have to make all this stuff uh, turn-based and whatnot. But I believe down here I have damage numbers which we take a game object target, we take an int damage, and then we show in a text mesh pro numbers get. So we instantiate a damage pop-up at a specific point. Okay. I'm 
going to uh, open up paint real quick. I'm just going to take a screenshot of this region. We're going to add that over here. And then we're going to scroll back up to find the damage pop-up value. So up, 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 up. Damage pop-up is a, is a game object. Okay. Game object. Hmm. How did I pull that off? As I take a look back at this, we instantiate the game object, damage numbers called nums, and then we get from that game object. So, do I just make a game object that has a text mesh pro thing on it? So, if I were to go um, like here, text mesh pro. Got Text. Cannot add mesh renderer to depositor because it conflicts with that. Right. So I think I need to add an empty to it. Okay, yes, yes. Um, create empty. We're going to name this text. Let's get back down to this thing. And we're going to add the text field to this guy. Hello. Obviously, it's, it's way too big. Um, we need to make it way smaller so that it fits inside this box. Okay. Uh, font size, let's try three point font. Um, let's go with uh, a number 10. Let's go ahead and center and middle align it right there. Why is it glowing like that? Okay, so we want this to probably be black or not. Why did that not change the text color? Supposed to be changing the text color, isn't it? Well, 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 you little bastard. And if I change any of this, it's gonna change it for everything. I don't wanna change that. Um what if I remove this mesh renderer? XMS Pro requires it, of course. Um, cast shadows off. I just want to make sure we're not going to collide with anything here. Fine. Um, okay, that's not auto sized. I want you to know that. Why? I'm so confused. Why does it have a like outline around it? Why is the text white when it should be black? What is this even changing? What? I swear I just did this before and then it like just worked. Text style H1. Quote. Link. Oh, that's not fucking like anything for me. Um, overwrite tags, color gradient. Doing nothing. Uh, 
Um, let's see. Unity text mesh pro dash text not changing color. It's saying to select the vector field color here. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Changing this value in code would be finding it and then writing that. We need to create new materials based on material. We need to create different material. Yada yada yada. Um. Yeah. That's not. Help me out here. Okay. Um, text mesh pro, uh, not changing when changing vertex color. How about searching that? How do you change the vertex? This is a question about in code. Varying colors with different text. Um, I moved this over. Okay, so that is what? Oh my god, I think I understand what's going on. For some reason, it's it's behind it. So it was changing color. It's just uh, this needs to be brought forward. I'm just not sure how to bring it forward. Maybe if I do this? No. Mesh renderer materials, additional settings, like pro. Um, how do I change this field again? Extra settings. Ah, here we go. Sorting layer. We want to go above background, sorting layer two. There we go. Now we can see it. Okay, so let's change this to like five. Okay. Jesus Christ. It's always like one thing that's just like not like correct. And it's like, okay, I'm, I'm just dumb, I guess. Shrug. Okay. So we have our text field. We have our text mesh pro text thing. We're good to go. We just need to keep track of that. So the thing with the depositor, however, is I think the problem going to arise when I do something else here. So let me let me do my assets. I think I'm actually going to make this multiple and apply. And then we're going to go Sprite Editor. And we want it to be uh, 32 by 32, I think, right? No, 32 by 33. I think if I just save, hit apply, I can then just move this down on my own, yeah? There we go. Okay. Hit apply there. Now it's two separate um, things, right? Uh, so let's open this up. Add that. That's going to be the top piece. And let's create a empty called sign. And the sign is going to grab a sprite renderer. And we're going to move the sign piece onto that. Just do this one up. There we go. And the text, we just want to move up to, let's unsnap that, shall we? Up to there. Okay, perfect. Now, I mean, if we hide the text, I just want to make sure these line up. They do. Excellent. Okay. So we have that in there. We have the sign, which has that. This we want to have the foreground, and we want to set the foreground to be zero. And we want to grab the text and have the text also be foreground and one. That's why it's up there. So things can go behind this sign. However, they cannot go in, uh, in front of this thing. So if we just click on the positor, 
That's going to be a bug background. The player can walk over it, blocks can go over it, all that good jazz. Right, okay. That's the, the plan. Okay. Also, let's reset that to zero. And 0 0.5, I think, would be fine for that. Damn it. I hate that the text thing is right there. It's so annoying when you're trying to mess with the sprite. Anyway, I think we can go with that. Uh, let's let's click on text one more time. What if I hit bold? Make it a little bit bolder. Uh, Alice size doesn't even matter. Fine. I think we can go with that. The middle, nicely done. Okay. Now that we have that set up, I move this. Mm. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. All right. So. Let's add a box collider 2D onto this guy. And we're going to have it be a trigger so stuff can move over it. We're just going to set this in like this, just like we have our pitfall, where they kind of have to go in the middle there. Uh, offset, we just want it to be 0, zero. Everything that goes in there is going to just get bloop, deleted or sent back to spawn, I suppose. There we go. Excellent. Okay. That's set there. And then ice. We also want to add a box collider on this thing. It's also going to be in this trigger, and we're not going to move it in much. Just a little bit. We don't want you to slide immediately when you're on it. We just want you to slide when you're kind of in the middle, right? So that's what we're gonna do for those two. I think now they've been set up to where we can work with them. And stuff, right, yeah, okay, yeah. Now, let's go back over to here. We can go ahead and delete our battle manager. We don't need that anymore. Let's first work on our uh, depositor script here, and we'll work on the ice script after. I think the depositor will be the easier one to do. So that's what we're going to focus on. So, serialized field, we want to add the um, I can probably just add a text mesh pro. We'll call it that. And then we can do a private void set text and we can take a uh, int value and for here just to kind of get this out of the way we'll do comparing with this thing here we just want to do text dot set text and we want to do value Although, since it's an integer, we need to do this and then plus that. So it's technically a string. That's kind of how you convert it to a string. There's probably a simpler way to convert to a string. But that's what we're going to do. Or I guess I can just do like the thing showed and set to string like this. Easy enough. And that'll just update the uh, text value. OK, easy peasy. Uh, next, we want a serialized field uh, of an integer or value. I'm going to rename this to int. Uh, I'm just going to call it v. Screw it. That way we don't confuse it with the value up here. All right. And on start, we want to get the text.set value is going to be value.toString like that. 
also a nice set of values set of text like that. So we're going to set the default text and that's going to be whatever value we put into it. And then we just need an update. Actually, we don't need an update. We just need to do on trigger enter 2D. We want to check if collision dot tag equals player. We want to then also grab a serialized field, game object, spawn point. We want to do collision dot game object dot transform dot position equals spawn point dot transform dot position. That way it'll just move the player back just like the pitfall trap does. Um, do I have a pitfall here just to make sure? I do right here. So when, example, the player comes in, it's gonna do that. Also, I, I should just I should just copy this to be honest. Let's uh let's just copy what we have here. So we will take this and remove it. And we're just gonna grab this. Put it there. So we'll check if it's the player. Um, and then level spawn needs to be switched to, to like control F. Level spawn. We're gonna change that to spawn point. It has triggered, it doesn't matter. Uh, this does not matter. And then the destroyer block, we want to set the game object to be false. That's about right, okay. Um, I just closed the pitfall thing. That's my fault. So inverse blocks don't matter because you pull them away, so that's fine. So, okay. So if it is a movable block, we want to take the value minus minus, which decreases it by one. We then check if value is less than or equal to zero, we want to do something. Well, actually, we don't want to do something. We want to um, destroy this dot game object. No. We just want to set it inactive, so we want to go this dot game object dot uh, dot set active equals false. Just set it inactive. <clears throat> okay. Um should I I should not manipulate value directly. I should go private new val equals, we'll just set zero. Oh, private int new val, we'll just do that. And then uh, down here in start, we'll do new val equals value. And then down here, we want to do new val minus minus and new val here. The reason for that is uh, when we do inevitably have to reset the level, um, we won't be messing with that, we'll mess with this private value here instead. So if we do a public void reset level, or I guess I should we call that reset uh, depositor, what we're going to do here is do new val equals value. And then we're gonna have to do some other stuff to the text, which uh, I think is just that to reset it. Um, and then if this dot active uh, game object first, if this dot game object dot active self uh, equals false, how does active self work? Active self is Seems like a method. I think it's just an app. Yeah. If it's false, we want to do this dot game object 
equals true. That way we uh, are able to respawn. Lovely. Perfect. So I think that's all we're going to have to do for the reset of the depositor in order to get that one working. So before we forget, in level reset, we're going to want to add a depositors value here. And we want to do reset depositors. And we're going to go if depositors.count is greater than zero. We want to do for each game object g and depositors g dot reset or g dot get component depositor script dot reset depositor. So that will just reset all of them. Um, very simple, very easy. Love to see it. And then we're done. Okay, next uh, for the depositor script. Down here, we just want to check. So if we know that new val is not less than zero, we want to come into here and we want to do basically this. Instead of value though, we want new val to be here. Um, so basically, when this happens, when something goes over the uh, depositor, if it's a movable block, it's going to destroy the movable block, take the new value down by one. If it's less than or equal to zero, which means this fulfill its requirements, it's just going to destroy the um, pitfall trap. And then otherwise, it's going to set the text equal to the new value that it is going to be, which would be just one lower than what it currently was. Excellent. And that should be all I have to do. Um, I guess I can just do set text new val here. Yeah. Anywhere else that I could have just used that? Yep, up there. Up here, we do that. We just do the value right there. And in start, I can also do that. You can have a value right there. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to have a method. I might as well use it, right? All right. So that easy. Depositor is done. So now if we um, come over to here and I pick a depositor. Oops. Not what I meant to do. Hit Control Z. My depositor should now have various things. Let's go to. We need to add the text here. Ashish, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh, and then the spawn point, we're just gonna move that here. All right, so let's move this depositor up here a little bit. And then I think our spawn point is right here. So let's do that. And then let's throw in a couple of cubes just to see what happens when we use them. And hit play. Okay. So there's one, so it goes down. There's two, it goes away. Awesome. And let's just make sure that if I step in it, it's also going to teleport me back. Yep, excellent, okay. So the one thing we could do to improve this is right now we are having the sign kind of just disappear as well. But what we could do is make it so that the sign has the depositor script. And we can move the text here, value two. And then we can remove the depositor script from the, from that. Copy that component. And we will paste it onto, how do I paste onto these things again? This component is new, there we go, okay. Okay, let me just do that. Excellent. So, what essentially I've done is I've made the um, sign its own object here. So now we can go into this and we can do serialize field game object um, it fall. 
portion. Whatever. All right. <coughs> and then um, what we'll do, rather than this game object set false, we will take the pitfall portion that it was false. The same thing here. Rather than this, we'll do pitfall portion set active and pitfall portion set active. Might have to do something else, but let's just set that there for now. Okay. So sign needs the pitfall portion assigned there. And how do I want to, I guess, for the hitbox here, we offset with like negative one, no, I need a negative one to the Y, right? Right there. It should still work. However, I am going to have to add a check here. So, I think we'll want to take this, put it here. That way it updates regardless of, uh... actually, no, I know what I can do here. Let's update the string, Let's get rid of this, and then we'll just, as a last thing, check if it's lower, and if it is, we'll set that equal there so that we have zero. Um, and then on trigger, what we'll do is we'll do if pitfall portion active self equals false, which actually I want this to be true. We can copy all of this once again. Good. Paste that there. We can take this and name this pitfall portion. Because our only hitbox thing has to deal with a pitfall. Rather than destroying the whole object with the destroyer block, we'll destroy the pitfall with the destroyer block. Um, that way our sign will always remain. So now try this again. Spawn point. Spawn point. The value is two. And let's hit play and just make sure that it works after these changes. We're gonna push that in there. One, two, and our sign stays but the uh, other thing goes away. One thing I will do, however, um, let's hide the text box so I can actually see what I'm doing here quick. I'm going to add a capsule collider 2D. And we're going to have this be a actual collision box. Let's make this horizontal. It's going to be very small, just the base of the sign. The player can go behind everything else, but not there. So it's very small. It should not cause any issues with anything. Um, it's just going to prevent the player from running into the sign, which would make it look we're going like in front of the sign, something like that. I don't know. Oh, hold on, I'll show. So right now I can't go up because the sign's there, but I can go behind the sign, right? I can go like behind it over here. You can see me. Right there. So that's sort of like a, a pseudo three dimension thing there. Why is the music so loud? Okay. Also, reach that level is for some reason above there. Hold on a second. Hey, reset level button. Why are you... Oh, didn't I fix you before? Oh, I, I think I fixed it somewhere else, just not here. Right, not in the tutorial area. Or the testing chamber, I guess. I fixed it in the real GUI, which is in the uh, main menu attachment. Not here. Okay. Excellent. So, our depositor is finished. We can go ahead and 
well, I'm going to rename this, to be honest. Um, depositor. I'm going to rename the actual depositor part to pitfall. Then we need to create a new tag called depositor and a new one called ice as well. Okay. So let's name these with their tags. Excellent. So now we can go ahead and save this one down to here. Add our new little depositor. Hell yeah. Um, actually, I should remove that spawn point from the prefab just to make sure it's not causing any issues. Not perfect. Okay. Okay. Now we have ice. Ice might be a little bit harder to deal with. So in our in our player move script, open that up, and also in our enemy script, where is that one at? Red slime script, right here. We need to add a new boolean for these. Uh, we're going to do a, oh, let's add it up here. Public bool is sliding equals false. And then player move if public bool is sliding equals false. Okay. So what we're going to do here is when you touch the ice, you're going to have this set to true. And it's going to essentially um, lock your motion until you're at the end of the ice. So let's see. If player allowed to move and is sliding equals false. Check for that. Um, however, we do want to do in here if is sliding equals false. Because we don't want the velocity to be zero. We uh, actually want something else to happen, right? So we want them to continue sliding. So if sliding is false, otherwise we're going to do this, which is just set is moving to that. So that should take care of the code for the player move. Uh, for right now, I'll have to figure out what... Uh, doing else here but for the slime we're also going to do and is sliding equals false here for them and is sliding equals false i'm going to move this out of fixed update On awake, wait for target. Hmm. Right, that's why I waited, isn't it? Throw that there. It should work. On awake. Hmm. Yeah. I think the reason we removed this is because, or I moved that down to there, was because of um, the GM script not loading before the enemy slime, but it should be fine once we're actually in-game, because the GM will always be loaded when we're actually playing, not when we're testing necessarily, but that's fine. Okay. Uh, we also need to do in this is sliding equals false and reset that. 
is sliding equals false. Ah. Okay. So, <clears throat> serialized field boolean is end. Next, serialized field. Hmm. I guess direction doesn't matter here. I think that's all we need is, is, is end right there. Maybe something else, but we'll deal with that later. So on trigger enter 2D and then on trigger exit 2D if is end equals true. We only want to trigger the exit if we are um, <coughs> the end block here. So we're going to, for anything that hits this, anything that gets triggered by this, we essentially want to do is sliding to it. So Collision. Well, first I guess we have to do a, a string object equals collision dot game object dot tag, and we need to do a switch object case. Okay. This is going to be a, a bit of a a thing. So, also, I'm going to take this and close it. Don't save. All right. So, our blocks that can move are the destroyer block. I'm going to note this stuff down here. I'm just going to add it to the switch here while I'm looking at this stuff over here. So, we got player, we got enemy. We've got our movable block. We've got our uh, inverse block. We have our destroyer block. Where's everything that can move, right? That would interact with the ice anyway. Player, enemy, movable block, inverse block, destroyer block. Yes, okay. Cool. So if we hit S, we can save that. It reloads. Okay. So we want to get the player move PM equals collision dot game object dot get component player move. Easy. Um, and the same thing for down here for enemy we want to do red slime script uh, em equals collision uh, game object easy peasy next for movable block we want to do mv equals collision game object block easy peasy then inverse block we want to do ib equals that and then destroyer block EV equals collision dot component destroyer block. Easy. So we're gonna get the components here that we're gonna use when we're determining the velocity and stuff like that that the player is moving at. So first we want to do PM dot is sliding equals true. Okay, we're basically going to do that for all of these. So em dot is sliding comes true right there. Uh, I now need to open. Let's close the conveyor belt. All right, I wanted to look at the conveyor belt script for stuff, but I don't think. No, it's fine. Screw it. Okay. I need to open up the movable block script. I need to open up the. Destroyer block script and the inverse block script. We need to add is uh, sliding to these. So public bool is sliding equals false. 
public bool is sliding equals false. And public bool is sliding equals false. So now, now's the time where I would basically go to Google and be like, hey, how do I make a, an ice um, puzzle kind of thing? And then they'd be like, here's some code that you can just copy. But since we're streaming, I think I can go to from scratch. Fuck it. So we'll just do the player for now. Because the player is, you know, something that we can we can handle, right? So let's just see what happens if I go onto ice. Um, let's copy this ice block over there a couple of times. Okay. So it actually did exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, as you can see, I walk onto it, I let go of the keyboard, but you can't see me letting go of the keyboard, but it just slides me right across nonstop. So what we want to do is tick is end on this block. And then when we hit is end, we want to do the same thing here pretty much. So let's do MB dot is sliding equals true. And then IB is sliding equals true. And then DB is sliding equals true. Oh, not there. DB is sliding equals true. All right, and then we're just going to copy this. We're going to get the strings. And we're going to set these equal to false now. Okay, and so I then also think I want to do um, pm dot rigid. Hmm. I remember your rigid body private. I think it is. Okay. Well, I do have this here. So let's let's just hit save and see what happens as oh, oh I can't do that. I need to uh do this first. Okay. We can also test the block right here. Uh, I don't think it's gonna do anything, but because all we did is add a uh, tag, but we can at least trust the player, right? So first test, I'm going to go ahead and let go. And it stops me right there. What if I Oop, oop, oop. Okay. And I can continue to go over here. Oh, fuck. The level end is right here. Forgot. Let's, let's toss that up there. So then if I, uh... Hold this, it should allow me to continue walking after I end. Okay. And just to double check, what if I hold D while I'm on it? Nothing happens. Perfect. Okay, so that works. The problem is not having, like, if you hit it from a weird angle um, and not like a straight on path, it won't end. And also, if I only have a two spacer here. If these are both is end, I think I will slide, stop, and then slide. Or I'll, I'll just stop in the middle of them, right? Yeah. Which is not what I want to do. Um, so the question is, how do I make it so that the player can slide across one? Hmm. Oh, oh shit. On trigger, stay 2D. 
And then on trigger... Hmm. Is there like a... Hmm. So on trigger stay 2D does something as long as the player stays in the box. So I was thinking I could have this, but it wouldn't undo it right away. Hmm. That wouldn't work, no. Well, I almost need to figure out their momentum and then list possible directions that the player could go in. But if they hit it from a not angle, it's just going to... Hmm. This is the, uh, the inverse block directional problem all over again. How would I solve that, by the way? By doing this huge thing, right? So let's let's do a private void get direction for right now. We're going to pass in. Darn, I can't just pass in like a variable. Hmm. Well, I guess I could do that. Yeah. Game object object is what it's going to take in. So I could do something like get direction and then collision dot game object for that. Uh, that would give me the game object there. And then going back to the inverse block, we can copy this. I'm just going to paste that in here. But instead of player, we want to look at the object. Dot position. And we want to get the. Um, why did I name that TV? Position back. Dude, I don't know why the fuck I named that TV. Why did I name that TV? Was there a reason? Like the translation vector? That doesn't, or the transform vector? Oh man, whatever. Back to the ice script. So in here, we're going to take the same thing and I'm just gonna copy all of this. I think that's the, no, this one. We're gonna copy all of this. Place it down here, of course, with the uh, things here. We don't care about these. We just want to know the direction. Okay. Uh, so maybe I, instead of a void, I return a string. Um, and we're going to do return right. And then return. Wait, no. This is the direction that they're coming from. We want it to be the opposite. So we are coming from above, which means they're going down. This means we turn up. Let's return left then. This one's return left. Uh, this means this one is return right. Return right. 
and that should return where the object is in relation to the block, so we know which direction it's moving. Um, Ah, uh, crap. Now I gotta figure out how to apply this. Let's do a, a string direction equals, and then we'll do that to get the direction. Um, movement. Let's just call it move dir. That's fine. Movement direction. Okay, so get direction player is moving because we don't want to have like a, an angle we want to know left right up or down and go from there uh, but now how do I how do I make it so that the player their velocity gets set to what I want it to get set to I just think about that I'm gonna get up stretch while I think about that and all that, so you guys do the same. I'll be right back. Eureka, I've got it. Okay, so two things we need to do. First, I think we're just gonna have to get the rigid body of all these objects in order to do anything with it, but we also need to have a way to tell if there's going to be an end to these or not. So we need to get a new Boolean. So, oops, not that. Uh, not a boolean. We need a serialized field. And then we need to do string. No, we need booleans. Yep. Let's go can move left. And we'll do can move right. Can move up. And can move down. And so, if we take this for an example, this one here, 
The only one of these boxes that we've added that we're gonna check is can move right. Okay. So. Uh, we'll have to do a little bit more to our uh, on exit. But for now, what we wanna do here, um, also it looks like I've been editing the is exit one here. I should have been editing the enter for the direction. All right, so we got the direction that the player is trying to move in. Uh, so let's make a private bool uh, called uh, oh, fuck. We want to do stop on stop on exit and equal false. So this we're going to add down to here and make an or stop on exit equals true. Um, and then we're going to come down here and do stop on exit equals false. Right to this thing down here as the last thing we do. Okay. So what this will do is we'll determine whether or not the player is able to move in that direction. So we need to check if uh, else if else if and then else if okay if move direction. I could just do a switch, couldn't I? Should I? Should I? Well, I guess it's something that we four string, so I might as well do that. So switch, move direction, case, break. It's gonna be uh, right. What did I copy that? Okay. Left, right, and down. up and then to the left because i did not name these any capitals right no okay let's just collapse that on itself so um right down is what it needs to be so in each of these we want to check the boolean so if the player is coming or is trying to go to the right, we want to check um, if can move right equals true. Else, we want to do stop on exit equals true. So the player cannot move to the right because there is a uh, because there's no uh, end block down that path. We want them to stop. Okay, and we'll basically be doing the same thing with the rest of these, except we'll be renaming them from their other thing to left, to up, and to down. Okay, so let me just make sure here. Up an accent equals true. Okay, then we get that. Yeah. Nice. So, 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 I keep saying so. I think it's kind of funny. Um, couldn't I? I might move this into a method if I do not use my player specific stuff in it. So, all these have rigid bodies, right? This thing has a rigid body. This thing has a rigid body. This one has a rigid body. Yeah, they all have rigid bodies. So I could essentially mess with the rigid body. Just do that, so. If we make a 
private uh, void. We want to do set movement velocity. We want to take a game object G and a direction or a string DIR. Would copy this down here. Okay, so we're going to do set move meant velocity, and we're going to pass in collision dot game object comma. Um, you know, I don't even have to do that. I can just copy this line. Uh, I can just copy this specifically and place that there, and we can get rid of this line that we don't need to have. Okay, so that passes in the movement direction, passes in the game object that we have, which means we just want to change move dir to be dir right there. And then, so if the player is moving right, what we want to do is get the um, vector three vel equals g dot get component uh, rigid body two d dot velocity, and then since we're moving to the right. We want to take the uh, vel dot y equals zero. And then we want to grab this again and do equals vel. I believe. So that should take the velocity and it's going to change the y value, which is going to be up or down movement, to zero, which means we can do the same thing over here for left, which uh, honestly, I guess I could just have said like, instead of finding the direction, um, we could have done something else, but I think this works. We'll test it. I, I was thinking about something for a second, and I was like, hmm. So we'll do that, and then we'll do that again, right there, to get rid of the x values. Let's hit save, and let's test player move now. So, uh, ice, we have a can move to the right. And uh, this one, I'm not going to do anything with. I'm not going to test that one. Um, so let's hit play. And if I start on the right, I should have the same. Is it flipped? Surely not. Well, at least the up and the, the down ones are going to work, right? So something's happening when I'm going out. So this one is can move right equals true. So maybe I should here do... Um, debug.log direction, just to see what we're getting. Because maybe it's the wrong one. Maybe I have it all backwards, I don't know. So yeah, it says we're heading from the right. Let's check our game logic here. So we're hitting right. 
and is checking if can move right equals true. We're doing this, which fine. But on exit, we check if stop on exit equals true or is end equals true. We're going to do that, but we shouldn't be. So if I check here and do a debug.log, shouldn't happen. Let's test and see what's happening now. Okay, so we are hitting the shouldn't be happening for some reason. Just to double check. And we, oh, is end is selected for that one for some reason. God, I'm an idiot. So let's try this one more time. Okay, perfect. Now if I try to hit it from that angle, It's a little finicky, but it is at least like stopping. So I'm on the ice now and it's not doing anything. Why is it saying shouldn't happen though? Because stop on exit should always be getting set back to false, so it shouldn't be happening every time. Let's open up the uh, debug part of this. Okay, so stop on exit is false right now. I'm gonna hide this ice block. And we're gonna remove and move right from that one. We're still getting shouldn't happen. Here. Well, I guess it should happen. But right here, the, the corner pieces, I guess it's confused about what I'm in, so it's not like snapping me to like a position. I mean, it works well enough. I think that's really all that matters is that it works well enough. So we can have things slip across it. And for the most part, I think we'll be using them in ways where the player's not gonna be walking to the corner across them. So that's fine. Uh-huh. Okay. So now we can remove our debug tags because I was just being an idiot. Um, And then we'll go debug right there, direction. Okay. So, we can remove our velocity here. I don't think we need to restore velocity, because after anything goes past, it's going to stop. Um, it's not like a conveyor belt where it continues. So, we basically just need to take this and copy it to these, yeah? Okay, so 
we get the direction, we set whatever to is sliding, and we do that. So, red slime. It should work. I don't think I need to test it. That's the same thing as having the player move. So if it doesn't work, we'll test it later. Uh, as for this, I guess we want to take... If is movable is true and is sliding equals false, and we want to do if is sliding equals false. No. When this sliding is true, this will never happen, which means it won't update the velocity, and it also won't set it back to zero. So I think that's what we want to do here. Before we do that to the other blocks, however, Let's test it with the movable block and make sure that it works. Let's just make sure we have these. Let's turn off debug mode because there's so much extra stuff here. Um, okay. The ice block can move right is not the end. And this one is the end. Okay, so let's move this one further. Let's actually make a fairly long track here just to test it with. Okay. And then let's, I'm going to move the movable block down so I don't have to deal with maneuvering it, but, and then we'll try this. Why did you stop, you piece of shit? All of these should be can move right. And it stop on exit debug.log lol. Okay. Try this again. Why does that happen? Why does lol happen? What happens after the first block, let me just double check to make sure I'm not an idiot and have is end picked here again. Okay, so is end is not ticked, but can move right is checked. So what is happening? Well, I guess let's just check the direction. So debug.log. Because uh, maybe it's thinking it's left or something when I'm pushing it in, which wouldn't make any sense since it's the same if I'm using up. Right. Right. Right there. Yep. Okay. Okay. So that code will work for the slimes and the enemy. However, we need to do git 
direction block for the blocks. Thank God I remembered that. So you're not sure why I deleted or created a second one of these and then deleted this negative one value. Um, if you don't remember, the issue we were having with the inverse block was because of our player. Um, if we open up our player here, like this, we hit this. This is the player's, like, not hit box, but like bounding box, which means it was searching here when it should be searching down here for the player. Um, however, the the block items, they're actually squares. So if we open up one of those, that's what they look like, right? Which means, first of all, let me zero that out before I forget. <clears throat> Which means that because of that, the uh, hitbox was wrong for him. So it was, instead of thinking it was there, it was thinking it was up here essentially. So now if I test this, it should run completely smoothly, not give us any problems. Oh, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Um, however, yeah, it, it, it stops me from getting off the thing here now. So, I think that when we reach an end, um, how do I want to do this? I could check here and do if is end equals true and pm dot is sliding equals true for the player. That would mean that the player has been sliding already. And we want the player to allow the player to move early. Um, so we just want to do pm dot is sliding equals false. I do believe. So let's hit play. Now if I slide over here, uh, right, ah, uh, it stopped me right as I entered it. Fuck. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let's add a new private boolean called exit now uh, equals false. We're going to do exit now equals true here. And we're not going to care about anything else because we're already sliding. And down in the exit thing, we're going to check these, first of all. Then we're going to add an or, an or, 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 or. Uh, exit now equals true. Do I need to separate those?
No, because that's not going to work. They're not going to exit the thing here. Yeah, that's not going to work. Let's erase that. Let's try something else. Let's do let's keep exit now as true. But we want to do on trigger stay 2D. And we want to do called once per frame for every 2D collider, other that is touching the trigger. So every frame. So it's like an update essentially. Okay, so we want to check if collision.gameobject.tag equals player. Um, we want to do this. But also, we want to do if exit now was true. Let's just do that one for now. I think I'm gonna have to do a uh, public void reset ice just to make sure here. So stop on exit equals false. Then we need to do a exit now equals false. All we should have to do there. Uh, but we will need to do um is sliding balls blocks get destroyed on reset so none of these matter i think i do need to i think did i reset the enemy i don't recall let's check i reset slime is sliding equals false perfect I did. Good job, past me. You thought of everything. Okay. So, sorry, back to this. My bad. Um, ice script. So essentially, we'll reset the stuff here, but we want to set exit now, and then while we're in it, if we are at uh, setting exit now, we want to check to make sure... In fact, we don't even need to check to see if the player is... The uh, thing, because the player is going to trigger the exit now to be true. So, what we want to do is essentially figure out what the hell is happening here. Let's hit play and look at the player, and then we also need to check the velocity. What is. Is that the fucking graph error? Okay. So, we're moving. Player velocity has reached zero, zero. Okay. So we want to check if collision.gameobject.get component uh, player move dot rigid, uh, I guess dot get component no, I don't need player move, I just need rigid body 2D. Um, dot velocity equals vector 3.0. Player has stopped moving. Let them move again. And then we just want to basically do uh, what's this? I guess vector 2.0? Okay. That's fair. That's okay. I understand why. Um, so, check to see if velocity is zero. If it is, we want to just automatically do... Uh, I'm just going to copy. 
copy this. Player move dot um is sliding equals false. So with that, it should allow us to move at the end of a path. If we hit zero for some reason. So we slide, red blossom zero, but we still can't move. Why? Add a debug, unlocking controls there. And let's go to here, remove that. Uh, ice one is what I want here. We want to open up debug. And we're going to, I guess we can't tick those because they're bad. Okay. You know what? Fine. I'll just do this again. Okay. So we have our ice one here. Just keep an eye out on those settings down there. We're gonna push. So stop on exit came up. Why did exit now not trigger? Look at this. So if is sliding that, so stop on exit happened. Where is stop on exit being called? Here. So I did exit, but then, so this happened. So then why could I not move again? If sliding is false. Regardless, we would go into here and what? Hold on. What? Drop one more time. Gotta check everything here that's happening. So we push. It says unlocking controls, but I got nothing. Yeah, yo. My slime character. Um, rigid body velocity is zero. Player move. Um, his sliding is still ticked for some reason. Oh fuck! You know what it is? Wait, no, it's not what. Did I typo this or something? Hmm? Wait, where was market controls? Exit now. Hmm. 
declared in this life is true as of now. It now happens. Wait. Did I... So exit now happens. But then I'm still sliding. Why? Maybe, just maybe, this is not zero. Actually, you know what it is? This fucking code right there. God damn it. Of course, as soon as that happens, it would, it would be like, okay, we're not at zero, so it's gonna <coughs> give us an error. God damn it. That's what it was. That one, that one little code right there at the end. Exit now needed to be inside the thingy thing, not outside. Unlocking controls. Oh look, I can move again. It's a Christmas miracle. Sweet, sweet. Okay. Yeah, I just I just had a, a boomer moment. And was like, I don't know why this is happening. Even though the facts were right in front of my face. Yeah, so this little line here, uh, it being outside the if statement, was causing the issue. So now everything should work, regardless of how I arrange the ice scripts. Now I can make ice sliding puzzles. Cool. Um, I think I did not finish doing this stuff, though, right? So, movable block uh, is movable, is sliding. So, we want to do an update. If conveyor change does not equal zero, is there something here that sets the velocity to zero? No. So, right, because the uh, destroyer blocks, they just, they just slide, come to a stop by themselves. They don't have a thing to test their velocity equals to zero or not. So what happens when I push one? Let's find out! Yep. And then I, uh, I get stuck on it, apparently. Because, uh... uh yeah. Okay. I guess I can go in here, check if is sliding equals true. Um, do I just do I just set the 
velocity to like whatever I feel like. Hold on. Let's uh let's take a look here. When I push the destroyer block, what is the velocity? It is two. So I can essentially go vector three uh, sliding velocity equals new vector three um, fuck. I wouldn't be able to necessarily do that because it's negative. Positive. I think I could just do like two comma zero comma zero like that, and then just down here do um, rigid body two D dot velocity equals sliding velocity. But yeah. I would have to go into here and then we get the direction. And then in the set movement velocity, I would need to check. <laughs> well, you know what? What if? Let me just check this real quick. So, do debug dot log vel. Let's just check the velocity here of the block and see what we get. I'm gonna remove this just so it doesn't hinder anything. So, I'm gonna push the destroyer block across the thing. We'll see what it shows us. So it gives us that. And then it immediately stops and slows down. Okay, so. Can do can leave this line here make this public like that but then go to the ice script and then take We'll do that, but also check if g dot tag equals destroyer block. Look at that. There we go. Uh, we want to do g dot get component destroyer block dot um, sliding velocity equals as well. We'll just copy this to the rest of these. Now if I hit save and test it, it should work? Question mark? Let's see what
Hey, baby. There we go. It does seem to take a moment before I get kicked off of the uh, block there. Anyway, let's test the inverse block. Oh. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh jeez, oh, oh god. It was freaking out right there. Um, this code right here was getting a bunch of errors right here. But was that because of the inverse block or what? Oops. Let's, uh, <clears throat> with that thing out of the way, let's try it a little bit more here. Oops. Inverse block, why do you all have copy troubles? Hmm? Hmm? What the shit? Okay, so I just held A that time. I'm not sure if that did anything. Let me... Oops. Let me try that again. Because I was actually holding the correct button. Yeah, so if I don't pull it off, it's gonna... It's gonna error out. What's the first... First error is just that. So... Maybe I should check this. Yeah, so if uh, collision.gameobject.tag equals player. There we go. Because otherwise, it's testing out the inverse block as well. The inverse block does work. It works just fine. Um, yeah, so I think that's everything that we got here. Do I even need to do anything with is sliding? Let me check one more time with the inverse block without the errors and stuff. Because I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not using is sliding at all for the inverse block here. Let go, and it just slides along. It just gives no shits. Um, why? But how? Certainly it should be trying to do this. You know what? It works? I'm not gonna mess with it. But I do wanna test other directions real quick. So put this one down here. This one we'll put down here. Uh, we're gonna say it can move down. And this one can move down and can't move right. We're gonna delete the first one. We're gonna move the inverse box up here. Where's the end level at again? Over there, okay. Let's try it again. Okay, so now we should be moving downward. And it works. Okay. I don't know how the inverse block works without me adding is sliding anywhere, but it works. I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth, and I'm just going to uh, close out of all this stuff. Let's give me some extra spaces there. Okay. Well. Oh. 
Okay, cool. Now let's um, save. Well, I guess we can. Hmm. Excuse me. Okay, I just want to point out that I almost deleted this last ice block without thinking and uh, making a prefab of it. Let's make a prefab right there. Okay, excellent. Now we save, and I'm going to unload that scene. I'm going to load this scene, unload that scene. Okay, let's hit file, build settings, build the game. Um, delete those real. Okay. okay, let's save the game there. And I think over here, I have my save data still from the previous game. Which means I should be able to load in and just start at the last level we tested, then we can play test through the rest of the levels here. So... Ugh. Right, it opens up as well, I forgot. All right. Let's pause our music, because we're gonna have a... Uh, we're going to have actual in-game music going on now. So let's go level select, world one, load up world nine, load level. Or hold on, go back to main menu. Let's hit continue. Okay, figure. All right. Um, now, slime experiments. What level pictures do I have? I already got nine and ten, so as long as we get to the orange levels, we're fine here. Um, so yeah, that doesn't do anything for us. We just need to fix through this, right? Man, compared to the complexity of the levels that we've been making recently. These ones that are just like, oh yeah, just slide these boxes around a little bit and you'll be fine. Um, they're so easy. Like it's hard to like really remember. Um, shit, no fucking shot. No shot that I just like get myself stuck. Restart level, please. Yeah, like the, uh, the complexity of the levels is just crazy, man. I was really not expecting the, uh, I was not expecting to play this level and be like, wow, this is so easy. I uh, completely forgot how easy this shit was. Why am I still being pushed up? Shit. Okay, let's open up our um, little thing here. So we went ahead and implemented all this stuff. That's fine. Three uh, in game. I think this is level 1 10. The conveyor belts don't stop moving you up when you're along the upper right. Like that. This is rough now. But don't worry, it's working as intended! Ugh. Ah, crap, right, that was... Oh my god, why did I do that? It seems to be just the up conveyor belt. 
We have to go through this again. Nope, it's still just like your velocity is going up now, sir. Oh, now I really fucked myself because now I can't go down at all. So it's this conveyor belt down here. I think that's messed me up. Oops, let's not go that way. Let's test while we're here. Let's put that there. Let's go down here. So I can move now, but if I touch this conveyor belt... What happened? What, why, why am I fine now? Hmm. So was it just a random glitch that occurred? That's not good. If I can't replicate it, how am I supposed to fix it? Let's just replicate what I did the first time, which was push this over here. And I kind of got stuck on that conveyor belt. But I'm not automatically moving, so I just went like boom. I'm not getting pushed, okay. Whatever. I mean, I guess. God damn it. <clears throat> Excuse me, level reset. No, not level reset script, the final level script. Number this one. Hard to load the next level when the game world manager doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> okay. Rebuild the game, and I'm going to have to get the level again. That's fine. That is fine. Monkey Dory. I'm going to open up paint while I'm waiting here. Um, um, um. Well, uh, if I don't, I'm not, I'm, not, if I'm not able to replicate the problem, that I had in that level 10. Uh, we're just going to ignore it, pretend that it didn't exist. Oh, hello there. I guess because I still triggered it, it allowed me to go through. Ah, oh, shit. Reset level. Reset level. Okay. I'll take it. I will, I will take not having to pass that level again. Fine with me. Um, I'm just gonna real quick go here. Hi. I don't remember what the last thing I saved was, so I just want to make sure it's something that's not bad. Hold on. What's the oh, never mind. I was saving in a weird space. I only had like six pictures in the place I was saving to, and I was like, why is there... Only six pictures, but I'm looking at another directory that has all of them. The answer is because I was looking at my screen, a Steam screenshots. Am I going to have achievements? I'm not sure how to implement achievements. I might think about it. If I can figure out how to implement achievements, I will do so. I just want to push it up, over, and down, and then all the way around town. Boom. We can spawn our blocks here. Go through here, and then... I forgot this plate did. Not together. 
did that, that's fine. We just gotta push this pressure, this block. Oh. <clears throat> Forgot to click back over here, that's fine. Up to there. Let me push this block all the way up to there and just push it into there. And here's the pressure for us. Yay! Okay. Grab the screenshot here. Level 2 2. File, save as 2 2. All right. Inverse block time. Let's see if I remember how to push these. Oh god, this level was one that was like a pain too. Oh fuck, am I stuck? Careful. Okay. Close. Almost got stuck. Okay. So for this one. That top block shouldn't be here. I don't think, right? Uh-oh, there's an error somewhere here. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, so let's change this one to level 2-2 has an error. Error. Error shows up with an extra block and reset bugs out. Okay, let's just resume for now. I'm gonna get a new picture without that block up there. Can you only fill the pits with yellow blocks or can any movable block fit so good question the thing is i don't remember i know inverse blocks cannot because since you're pulling them um the inverse block will oh, there's an inverse block up there on the upper right too Fuck. reset level Oh my god, it's not destroying inverse blocks! <clears throat> Main menu, please. Okay. There we go. Now everything's reset properly, there's no extra block and all that good jazz. So, yeah, to answer your previous question before I got distracted by all this stuff, being in weird positions, um, mouse, mouse jam, there we go, okay. Uh, the inverse blocks cannot fill the pits because you're, you know, walking backwards, so if you try to push one in, you're going to hit it first and it's not going to work. Um, however, if I don't get stuck, The destroyer blocks, they will just destroy the pit instead of um, filling it. Right, I remember what I have to do here. I have to push this back. And those are the only three block types that I have. The inverse, the destroyers, and the... I don't think that'll trigger that yet. And then we will block, so... Only the other ones can fill them up. So, bloop! Let's keep going backwards. Ah, heck. Thank you. Eat the shit. Push a normal block into an inverse block, huh? Honestly, I do not recall. I 
if I've ever tried that. Good question. We should test that out. If I remember correctly, the Indra's blocks are not affected by... They are affected by those, so that's fine. I need to move over one more. There we go. And onto the pressure place it goes, and I'm out. Something can be interacted with. I don't notice any errors in this level. I don't think. Okay. Let's grab our screenshot for level two, three. Um, let me add a note here. Huge success. Just gotta write that down. Can normal blocks move inverse blocks? We'll try that out. All right, so this block, right, this is that one, okay. Honestly, I guess I can just push this here and up to here. Now, a fool, well, I guess it doesn't matter. I was say, fool would just push that block in first, but it doesn't matter. If you push that in first, the other one will be there to allow you to move it like this. Okay, and now we flip this one allows us to grab these and then we can flip this which allows us access to these and the correct one is this one and that one now we can leave okay feast your eyes on one of my latest inventions the attack tower if you get hit it won't kill you but it will reset your progress as well as destroy any block that Okay, save, file, save as, number four. Okay, open mouse, there it is. Okay, so this block you can't use, so I'm just gonna use it right there as a kind of barrier. Oops, got stuck, oh god, that was close. Fuck you, piece of shit. Good. Let's go. Don't get stuck in the walls is the name of this game. Okay, that one goes to the right. Now this lever opens up that. Okay. I feel like I'm missing something. Why did I have those big divots in the level? They were not like supposed to be for something. Oh my god, I just remembered what this fucking level is supposed to be. This level was supposed to have it show that you can destroy the inverse blocks with the uh, bullets, but since we want to make those shields now, they don't. Hold on. Uh, level 2-4 change pressure plate to spawn a destroyer block instead. We'll do that. So, yeah. So the pressure plate will now destroy a destroyer block that you can push and you have to avoid it getting hit by arrows and stuff like that. 
pies. All right, now we got the portal room. Array. Go away, text. Okay, it's gonna be four or five. And uh, I'm gonna real quick get a uh, new thing of water. Be right back. All right, I'm back. My stomach was also like killing me, so I uh, got some saltines. I think that's the only thing that I have that's quick and easy to eat. Stomach was killing me because I was hungry, not because I was uh, feeling unwell or whatever. Uh oh. Uh oh, spaghettios. The slime is gone. It's breached containment. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. Level two five. First room, top orange portal, makes slime disappear. Good to know. So second orange portal, third orange portal, and fourth orange portal. Looks like they all work except for the one in the upper right for some reason. You don't know why. Yeah, it looks like every single one of them works except for uh, that one upper right. No idea why. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Nope, there's some on the bottom left to do it too. Okay. the middle blue in bottom left. Let me just double check on that one. Middle blue? No. Bottom blue. No, the top blue. Okay. I'm sure I was just moving portals around. I misaligned one somewhere. Fine. All right, let's hit these again and just remember not to go in the portals that are bad. Okay.
Which portal? There we go. All of them done. Now we just gotta get back to the middle room. And this middle one here takes me down to here, here, or there. Ah, yes, the clicker room. Boy, oh boy, do I love the clicker room. Dare hit that yellow block. Right into the gate, and out we go. Two dash seven. Get rid of these uh, annoying towers. You. Power, make it easier for me to deal with this. Take out that red one there to give me an extra block room. Sneak under there, push that up a little bit. Get right against the wall, mesh a little bit there. I don't think that's going to cause problems, but let's go up here and in there we go. Down around, let's go, baby. Oh yeah, look at me styling on you. And up we go, and over in there, and then down. Got to be very careful not to hit anything with this guy. We could have taken the tower, and that would save us some issue here. Okay, 
Now the hard part, I say hard part, but it's not really that hard. You just gotta get over here without hitting the conveyor belt. Send it down to there. And you can walk through here and push it against the wall. Excellent. All right. Let's see how you fare with this one. This one's so fun. I love this one. Almost got that stuck kind of against the wall. That would have been bad. One thing I didn't notice, if we have a uh, destroyer block and we hit, we start level, it doesn't destroy the destroyer block. I also noticed that with the uh, inverse ones as well. So, we'll have to try that. Man, I forgot what I was doing at the end of it. And that really screwed me up. I was so close to beating it, and I was like, wait. Are there blocks missing? What do I do next? It's because I forgot to hit the pressure plate at the end. Yeah. Then I went and screwed myself. I think I can push all these against this wall. Let me get behind the layer and hit first. Okay. Get you all down here, and then I'll push you into the holes. Those holes are made for you. Get in there. All right. I'm going to spawn. Give it a second. And we're going to go down here. Move these while pushing that block up a little bit higher. There. Now we'll run back. Finally, hit this pressure plate to get us a explosive. probably take one of these blocks and fuck and fuck exactly um no you could like take the top block that I've been moving around you could while blocking the uh, upper left there
You know what, Ryle? <clears throat> How dare you phone out a uh, very, very flawed thing in this map? How dare you, first of all, okay? How dare you? Very true. I think I forgot that they uh, could destroy gates for some reason. I was like, surely they won't try to spawn a destroyer block and then... Yeah. I think with the new tech that we've made... Um, this is level 8, right? So, make... The destroyer, destroyer block pressure plate spawn when you pull the lever. Smiley face. Yeah. So once you pull that lever, the destroyer block spawner will spawn. And uh, I need one more destroyer block anyway. So, I forgot about that other gate. <laughs> But yeah, I was thinking, um, instead of doing this, you could take like this top block and you could use the destroyer block to destroy one of the gates next to the pitfalls and then push one of those yellow blocks, whoo, that was close, into a pitfall and use that to cross, cross here and then just have like one destroyer block to, or one, uh, one, are the movable blocks blocking the towers on the left? Just the bottom line that you need, and then you can kind of avoid the, the top one as you can. Or, when you have the towers blocked, you can move a destroyer block over to destroy the towers. And whatnot. Yeah. Ah, oh, here's the fun one. Those blocks aren't supposed to be there. Why? We were having like such a good time on the first 10 levels with blocks being destroyed before the map was getting loaded. But now they're just fucked up again. I don't know why. Um, nine blocks aren't being destroyed again for some reason at the end of a map. Yeah, anyway, let me go to the main menu quick. And we'll level select from two, level eight. Really? Right, because they're attached to a fucking button. And that, uh, doesn't have a sprite yet. That's why they don't work. Duh. I was going to go back to that level 8 and show you, uh, your suggestion. But, uh, we're just going to move this down here. And there we go. This level's really fun. Oops. Oh, that would go in here. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing, Ryan, is I have it to where the entire level gets destroyed. And 
and then the new level should be getting loaded after that. But it's just not for some reason. Make ourselves a little wall here. So we've got to wait. As that block goes up, and wham bam, minute 45. And now level, well, this is level 10, yeah? I don't really have the time to wait for the uh, speech to stop, damn it. Come on. Come on, ma'am. We're burning daylight here. Come on, man. I gotta move. Gotta move. Wow, we've lost like a fifth of our time already because of that. Okay. I will be hitting reset level here to beat this level. Also, speedrun strats, you can uh, use the pitfalls to go back to the beginning of the level. Nope, don't, don't, don't get, okay. well, reset. Well, that doesn't help if you uh, screw up the block placement there. Once again, I, uh, I fucked myself. Go. That was just a, a matter of waiting for that block to make it all the way down there. Come on, block. Come on, you can do it. no next level so we're done hell yeah baby okay um now i need to just open up every single level we got a screenshot of and do that Where is there just music? Come back. Hey.
Well, thank you, GeForce Game Ready Driver Update, for being available. I don't care. are there? Jesus Christ. This one's going to be a little bit difficult, I think. Ooh, just barely got it. Oh, you can kind of see it there, still. You know what? That's an Easter egg. But yeah, as for achievements, like you had asked before, I would like to add them, but I'll do that at the end of the game, once we uh, have everything made, if I can figure out how to do it. I'd like to get everything fleshed out, and worry about other extra stuff. Okay, and here's the last one that we needed to make. Let's go to our... GUI, level screenshots. Let's grab these 10, throw them down here. Boosh, boosh, apply. Okay. That means we need to open up level select. Level select panel. So we need to open. And then world panels. World two. And then all of these, I don't necessarily have to toggle them on. I just gotta drag them over to here. Okay, and then in the main menu canvas, the reason why we couldn't open up the level two worlds was because we did not have the images here. Like this. Okay, and now we should have no problems with <coughs> that. I'm gonna leave that check if it ever has to be or not. Okay. So we're good now. All right. Um, let's look at. I guess first of all, let's open up our test world areas. Okay. I'm gonna hide this one. And we'll get down to our level prefabs. So, is it level eight? Yeah. You were asking about level eight and the uh, thing here. So, let's try that out real quick. They're saying just using a, a destroyer block to destroy the gate to free those blocks here. What you were saying, which you can't do because the block can't go past the conveyor belts. And that's why, because the conveyor belt going at a, a fast enough speed <clears throat> to where you can't push something up against it, and the gate's far enough back that it doesn't hit the destroyer block. So that's why you can't just destroy the gate in the beginning. With that there. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so. Let's remove that. Level 2-2 two, two had an error with an extra block showing up up here. And resetting didn't work for some reason. What's this? I don't have the game world manager. I need to hide that real quick. Once again. Okay. Also, it was the question of can uh, inverse blocks move or can normal blocks move inverse blocks, which we can test right here real quick. I'll just put down a normal block right there and we'll see what happens. push an inverse block, and what happens if it does? I think it will just push it. Yep, it'll just push it. That's fine. I don't really want to sort out um, the logic behind doing that stuff. The player... Very rarely do we have inverse blocks show up in the first place, but if the player wants to use them like that, that's fine. That'll work. Okay, um, let's cross that one off the question mark. So in 2-2, we were having an issue with resetting. So let's hit play and go reset level. So I got an error here. Level reset at reset cages. What do we want to check at is active at start. So I think that's because if we look at the cage, it doesn't have an active at start thing. Which now it does. So now if I hit play and do that, it should work just fine. If I were to hit reset level, it resets the level. Okay. So let's go to our age prefab and do is active, active at start right there. So that way it's always like that. And we don't have to do any humdrum nonsense. Um, So inverse blocks weren't getting destroyed at the end of the level. Let's, let's move this boy out the way and then hit reset. Is there an error? No, it's just not destroying them. Okay. Right. So let's see here. I think I do it up here for the movable blocks. Yeah. You want to do I blocks and D blocks for uh, destructible blocks. Those are the only things that are going to be moving around. I suppose we also want to get um, projectiles. So we can destroy all those. Projectile. Um, then we got the destroyer block. We got the inverse block. And then we just want to basically do this. Two and then three. 
undo the proj. Proj. And proj. Oh. Block, my bad. I forgot we were doing that naming sense. I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, so then we have the I blocks. I blocks. And then the D block. And the D block there. So to be everything like that that gets destroyed, right? Let me project to find in scope. You wanna fucking die? What do you mean? Where's this error at? Oh. You do it down there. Well you know what? Fine. Did I really do it down here? Yeah, I'm destroying the projectiles here. That's odd. I'm gonna move that at the top. What happens first? Because one problem was that I saw a, in the portal room, I saw a um, projectile going through the uh, portal for some reason. That was odd. Okay, and we'll save that. And then in level 2-4, we want to change the pressure plate to spawn destroyer blocks instead. So this one right here, we want to have it spawn destroyer blocks. Because then the projectile will get destroyed um, and the destroyer block will get destroyed, so you have to kind of keep it hidden in there. And then you could just destroy the gate with the destroyer block, but you should push the lever Push it down there on the conveyor belt so we can go down there and destroy a pitfall. Just to make absolutely sure that uh, this does what I want it to. I'm going to get rid of that. And then level, 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 level 2 4, right? 2 4, yep. Let's throw this bugger over here. And I'm going to grab a destroyer block, and I'm just going to put it right here for the sake of experimentation. I just need to make sure that the... Where's my slime guy? There he is. Okay. I just, I just want to make sure that, uh... Fuck. It got stuck. I don't know why it got stuck. Wait, do I not? Yeah, I don't, I don't have, um... Uh, destroyer blocks, I need your code, please. I think it got stuck on the wall, yeah. It does have conveyor change, I was right. I was thinking it didn't, hold on. Show this one more time. I'm actually going to put it on the conveyor belt. I don't need to flip the lever. I just want to see. Okay, so it does move. Does it destroy the pitfall, though? Yep. There it goes. Excellent. Okay. Alright, so we've replaced that. Uh, and then level... Uh, 2-5... Portal AC, this one. These were, yeah, not in the right location. So I think I was getting teleported into the wall was the issue there. And then the other portal was the top, bottom, left, so. This one? Wait, did I miss it already? 
Yeah. Okay, yeah, it makes sense that those were the two since they're matched together. Yeah, I was definitely getting spawned in the wall and it was like, no thanks. Kicking me out there. Okay, so if we add this level now and I try to go through them, I should be able to do so without much issue. Yep, there we go. Yeah, I was definitely getting spawned in the level, like, bounds, and I was getting, like, teleported somewhere else or something weird like that. It was being just cranky. Okay, and then... Some levels need the inverse blocks and destroyer blocks destroyed. Added that logic. Um, make the destroyer block pressure plate spawn when you pull the lever. I'm so glad that I specified which level that's for. I didn't do that. This one. Do eight. So, we want to grab the first pressure plate here. We want to set it to hide. We want to grab the lever. We want to make it multiple objects. Um, add a couple starting states. So, that lever opens up that gate, which we want to delete. We want to move this one into objects to change. We want to have these both start as, uh, well, the first one starts as true, that one starts as false. This pressure plate goes into the other object to change. And that should work. Let's hit save, drag that over here, and give it just a test real quick. Okay, so here I am, being a little guy. Um, move up, please. I'm going to grab my character and I'm gonna drag him down here. We're gonna hit the lever. We're gonna cause those to go up. Pressure plate goes over there. Grab my guy again. We're gonna fling him up here. So we can move this over here. And let's say, oh no, I got hit. And then it resets everything. Perfect. Okay, so that one works after we did that. Yeah, now the player can't just spawn a... Uh... Actually, it didn't matter. Yeah. I think our whole discussion on doing that was because we were thinking they could just destroy this gate and do that. But I suppose it makes a little bit more sense to have it like that anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Whatever. Delete that. I'm not changing it back. So, next, the last thing was that the, at, the, at the end of the level, the blocks aren't getting destroyed. So let's, let's take a look at what happens when we finish the level. First, we call end level. We wait for five seconds uh, at that point, right? Yeah, this is the end level script right here. So we check to make sure five seconds has passed from the beginning of the game because we don't want to trigger the uh, thing early um, by somehow it being in a weird spot. We then set to is loading, has trigger, that throws up the loading screen. We then do that, check high scores, then we start end level coroutine, which waits for five seconds before doing anything, or 0 0.5 seconds, I'm sorry. It then goes to the next level, it gets the next level there, and then we set up deleting the level. First we save, and once the save is completed, we send the game to spawn new level at the game world manager. I'm gonna wait 0 0.5 seconds before spawning the level. So unless it's taking the game 
0 0.5 seconds to destroy the level after calling this, I don't think that's working. So I guess we can just set this to be one second. Because I feel like destroying the level should be pretty quick um, within a second. We can try that. And with that, all of our problems are solved. Cool. Well, problems for the day, anyway. Who's to say how long will last uh, for our next problems? Okay. So, it's almost been five hours. We're going to wrap things up. And, uh, where is my house selected? I just hit four. No, no, what? Eh? Eh? Yeah. Okay, my, uh, my, 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 my avatars, emotes weren't working to put down my, my hands. Ugh. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, we're gonna wrap things up. We made some good progress today. We made two levels, finished uh, the first 20 levels of the game. We then added a couple new block elements that we're gonna be using, which is just, mwah, just beautiful. Um, so we'll see how those work next time when we uh, do those. So I think tomorrow we'll definitely be starting on level 21 and onward. Uh, we might I think what we'll do is we'll introduce the ice block. Yeah, we'll introduce the ice block in the first level next time, and we will have the player complete a sliding puzzle. One of those good old things. And probably run into a bunch of problems that arise after we actually implement a level with ice blocks. So that'll be fun. But until next time, bye for now.